Good evening, everyone. I now call to order the budget work session of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tartarus Springs on Tuesday, July 29, 2021, at 6 p.m. Ms. Jacobs, roll call, please. Mayor Allen, who's this? Here. Vice Mayor Carr? Here. Commissioner Chair Panny? Here. Commissioner Donovan? Here. Commissioner Vatikiotis? Here. The purpose for tonight's meeting is for the Board of Commissions to study issues, gather and analyze information, and to clarify questions. No votes are conducted during the work session. No public comments will be allowed tonight on the budget. However, will be allowed during the two public sessions hearings that we have scheduled for Tuesday, September 7, 2021, and Wednesday, September 15, 2021, at 6.30 p.m. The duration for this work session tonight is from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The first item on the agenda is general fund, general fund budget follow-ups. Then we're gonna to go to a salary survey and new positions. On July, just to remind everyone that on July 20th, during the, the first budget work session, the board had some questions. On July 23rd, 2021, Mr. Harry provided us with an email with the uh, re, uh, responses to our questions. Um, I'm sure that everybody has a copy and an, an additional copy has been provided to us tonight. Mr. Herrick, would you please come to the podium in case that uh, if anyone has any questions, does anybody have any questions or any discussion what's on, your, on the follow-ups? Anyone? On the salary survey? No. On the uh, general funds budget, the follow-ups. The uh, document that was provided to us, that it's on your desk as well. Uh, no, not nothing on the follow-ups. Anybody has any? Did you send this to us, Ron? Email? When did you? Did on you the twenty-third. Okay. But also, there's a copy for us today. What? Um, I got a quick question. Did we get an answer back about the um, the arts? I asked a question about um the revenue and expenses over the past, I don't know, five years or so. I don't recall getting that information. Is that in the packet? Yes, that's number seven on the uh, packet here. I don't know. I, I, I missed this email, so. Got about a thousand of them this past week. <laughs> I have one here. Thank you. Any other questions? I haven't had a chance to look over any of this stuff, so I just just for clarity, this is the least prepared, and I'm not excited about this budget season at all. So, You're not? no, <laughs> it's I'm frustrated to be honest, but it's not staff's issue. Mission done. Yeah, I had a question um, for Mr. Herring, and maybe uh, you can direct me wrong whether or not it's I should better ask this to the board, but. At the last work session, it seemed as though we had consensus. I just wanted to confirm moving forward for some of the, the, I just had two general fund recommendations. One was just an extra five grand to cops and kids for a possible marquee sign uh, outside their building, letting people know about the different events and registration offers, that kind of thing. Um, did we have any kind of follow up with that or do you need general consensus from the board? Is that something you recommended at the last meeting or? Yes. Okay. We can go ahead, if we got the consensus, we can go ahead and put that I in. I don't remember us getting a consensus. Yeah, that's I'm a little vague on that, but. Uh, okay. I don't, I don't have any issue with it. It's just, it's $5,000 at the last meeting. I think I, um, I think it was kind of in like a question asking period, so that might be my fault. Um, but essentially, I talked to the director of Cops and Kids way back when and was talking about their different budget needs and something that they'd like to do is just put one of those little marquee signs on the side of their building, similar to kind of what's at like the Elks Lodge. And then that way they'll be able to let, you know, families know about, hey, you can register your kid by this date or, hey, Cops and Kids is doing a food drop off on this date or um, different camp info, that kind of thing. Should probably even cost less than five grand. That was just something I decided to, to throw in there. Um, so just if I, there's general board consensus from that. I'm good. What's the, I mean, what, is there a digital one that we could look at? Is there a cost for, does anyone know what the cost is for that? No, I didn't look into a digital one. I just know for those plastic ones that you just screw into the side of the building with the the different uh, interchangeable lettering is what I look. I have into. no problem with it. I mean, it's I'm okay with it, but I, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Herrick. I, I will okay with a budget to do that. Pardon me. I will okay with a budget to do that request. We'll get with the budget. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know, there's 150,000 okay in general fund, so 
Yeah, we'll be able to find that. We'll right. be able to do that. Yes. I'm okay with it. Uh, Commissioner Terrapani, you okay with that? Yeah, Commissioner? I, I am. I just wanted to, to mention to the board with the um, summary that we have that you gave us between the available funds, the general fund, the CRA, and also um, I think the penny. Is yes. that it? Right. Uh, we have 100, if I remember right, about $150,000 in general fund money that's not been allocated yet as part of this budget. So I have no problem with that. I, and I would suspect whatever um, positions we- 184,000, 184,000. Right, uh, well, whatever it is, it, it's, it's more than 5,000. So um, I don't have an issue, with, but it, I think those, whatever positions we talk about tonight are gonna come out of that amount as well, as right? Correct. Uh, general fund money. Correct. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. And so can, I guess for clarity, does it matter if it's a, a monument sign with that type of information on or it has to be like up in the up top corner of the building? I mean, what is the difference that it make? They just wanted something basic to yeah. where they could get information out to the community. Okay. So I think their idea was something on like the side of the building. There's that open lot there on the side of it, um, something like that. But I'm, I'm sure they wouldn't, they wouldn't, you know, they'd be open to changing it. Is there a it. sign there now? Mark, I don't think there is one up front, right? Uh, Vice Mayor, with all respect, let's talk about the budget that we'll come back how to sign. That is it, I mean. Yeah, we just okay the funding and okay, that's then we'll fine. come back with your design how to do it. Okay. And just, just for clarification, you, you want this out of city funds and we get cops and kids donation money, but you want this out of city funds? Yes. Okay. Um, and then the only other thing that came up last meeting and we don't need any new funds to do this um, that I had mentioned was moving the $3,000 that we give to the Homeless Leadership Board of Pinellas to our local Shepherd Center. Shepherd Center. Yeah, just if we yes, you said the Shepherd that Center. I think yeah. that, yeah. I just I'm wanted to confirm we were good with that. To. We've got, we'll put that in the next budget version. Okay. okay. That's it, that's the only things I wanted to follow up on. Any other ask. follow ups on the uh, general fund? I have some there. Yeah, cool. Um, Ron, I, I had asked about the uh, the other current charges, and we had talked about that, but I'm having a hard time remembering, and you were gonna give a, a synopsis as to what that was about. That's on page 77 of the executive summary. Yeah, I don't know if you have the backup, but it's, it's page five. I can go through them here. Page Throughout five the whole, of, the memo, of what you provided? Yeah. Yes, this thing here. Gotcha. And it's got a, it details that, that line item, human resources, 1,700 advertising jobs, planning 10,000 for advertising for legal, city clerk, more advertising for hearings, uh, uh, police, they have about 15,000 for required advertising, building development, $900 for legal ads, cultural, 1,000 for advertising of jobs, in non-departmental, we have 6,000 for the required budget ad. We have $125,000 for the maintenance reserve, and then we have the 184,000 that is available for the appropriation. Right, and of the 184, I know we talked about it, I'm not sure, I thought we had consensus, but since we're talking about it now, we had discussed adding uh, 25,000 or 30,000 back into the budget for the uh, Greek Town facade grants, and I already netted that out of that amount. That's out of the 184 already. Right, that's net of that. Okay, yes. great. You're good with that, Mayor. We had consensus on that. Yes. Okay. All right, cool. I think that was about it yeah. that I had on that. <coughs> did you find the page? I did. Oh, good. Do we have any other follow-ups on general fund budget? I've got Go one other question. Um, City Manager, we talked about this in the past about code enforcement, how the code enforcement was going into the general fund. For those fees, did we have any follow up on that at all? Yes, that's in your pack. That should be in your packet too, isn't it, Ron? Yes, it's it's item six. We went through there and we we looked at the revenues, the expenditures, and um, like in item six, we got if we budget 135,000 for the revenues minus expenses of 110,000, it leaves 25,351. <clears throat> and remember, that's a number that could change. We could have we've had years where it has been. Close to two hundred thousand. We've had years when they've been ninety thousand. So, so while it says there may be twenty five thousand left from what budget in, it could be more than likely it could be a higher number. I guess it could also be a lower number, but um, it could also be a higher number where you could where you could designate the overage and where the overage would go. Whether it went to a land preservation fund, whether it went to something else, um, because again, it's just an estimate. So. 
um, there could be the possibility of more money there if you want to allot that money to something uh, specific in the general fund. So, Mark, what we talked about in the past, though, is that the code enforcement officers actually covered through, I don't know what it's called, general funds or in, in general, but this Please is actually put. pulled out in this, and we initially talked about, like, attorney fees covered and anything else. So if you add the 61000 and the twenty you you're looking at $86,000 then at that point. Um, that could be used for um, land preservation fund, beautification projects, and park projects, like Riverside Field updates or Sisler Field updates or Discovery Park updates. Um, at the end of the day, I, I think it's good to allocate these funds. We've talked about it for a couple of years now. I brought it up, but this is finally the first year that I got some type of acknowledgement. Um, on the budget side of it from staff. Uh, so I think it's a good idea to at least allocate those funds when they come in that it just doesn't go to the general fund and it's, it's like well, whatever comes up, we'll spend it. So if it's a code enforcement, it's a blighted property, it's been a nuisance for the neighbors, it's been a nuisance for the residents for many years, um, let's take that money, instead of just using it for anything, let's use it to beautify the city and actually be a, a benefit to the city. So it, it could be for um, a, a quarter of it could go to the land preservation fund, a quarter of it could go to beautification, a quarter of it could go to um, the recreation upkeep, and then a quarter of it could go to something else. I don't know what that would be. Maybe it's a third, a third, and a third. Um, so I know we've talked about in the past, uh, there's been interest in the board about designating those funds so they just don't go back to the general funds, but I think that would be a good idea to have some type of um, designation of where those funds go. I don't know the proper way to talk about it, though. I mean, is that a discussion point, Mark, or? Yeah, Ron, explain the personnel thing, because I think that's one position. That's not, explain how you did that with the positions, because there's two positions there. You've only got one accounted for. The, yeah, we yeah. only used the one position. We also, we didn't include the code enforcement clerk in that uh, revenues minus the ex and total expenditures there. If we did, we would have a, a, a negative number there. Roughly about seventy thousand negative. Well, may I ask a question, Mayor? Sure. Or are we? I, I'm not sure. I understand what we're saying. Are we not ready to discuss allocating those funds, City Manager LaCourse? Is that? Well, I'm we can not discuss. Sure what the point? I don't. We just have to agree for the amount. For instance, if the if this if the one position in code enforcement i think we changed it because when the officer came out i think ron changed how he classified it because we didn't do the officer but we did the clerk before i believe when we were doing the accounting and stuff so the question is does that sixty-one thousand go back in the general fund budget which subtracts from your total that you have if you're going to allocate the money for something else that's the decision you have to make because if it goes back into the if it goes back and you're going to allocate that sixty thousand to something else in the budget then that's going to that's going to drop down the general fund money that that you have in there. So, what would you recommend to hold off a discussion on this past tonight? Or well, again, it would be the board if that's what the board wishes to do. If they've they've got places, I know land preservation has been mentioned before as one place I'm for some of the money to go into. Um, if there are some ideas tonight of of where that money wanted to be allotted to, we can certainly entertain them tonight because it's been talked about for a while. Um, um, again, land preservation is the one that stands out because we've talked about there's no place where we put land preservation money from and possibly this could be a place where we dedicate money from and I know um, the vice mayor has some other ideas about the money. So again, that would be, to be the board to decide and, uh, and then we adjust it in the budget um, per the board's request. Vice Mayor. Where there will be the advantage of doing that? What's the advantages of it? Yes. So currently there's no money going to learn land preservation. There's not a, really any dedicated money that goes to beautification and then recreation. There's always improvements that we have. If you've seen the backup um, of the capital improvements, there's a significant amount of areas of, that we need addressing in the recreation side. So again, it's a blighted area. It's money that's coming in. It's just. Uh, lack of better words, it's a slush fund is what it is. I guess the back, I'm not trying to say it's a slush fund, but that's a lack of better words, right? So it gives the city manager some flexibility to spend some money at the end of the year on what he wants and what maybe some priorities are, but it, it's the opportunity to really dedicate these funds to make the town more beautiful and preserve land um, out of the, the blighted areas. I, so. 
there's not yeah. money dedicated annually to these areas. That's what I'm trying to say. So there's, it's just kind of going into anything. It's kind of just a floating fund. I'm not, Mayor, if I may, this is general fund money we're talking about, yeah. right? Correct. That's where code enforcement fund goes currently. No, no. So, so basically it would be for services and materials for plants and things of that nature, not anything that would be of, um, of a, a capital nature. No, I mean, it could be if we need to replace it. It could offense. be, but, yeah. but, but, we, but is that what we want to do? I guess what I'm getting at is I, you're hitting me cold on this. I mean, myself, I'm not sure about the rest of the commission. I'd have to give that some thought, especially if we want to play it off the, uh, the assistant that um, the city manager is talking about that we're going to address at some point um, and how that's going to interplay and reduce funds out of the general fund to pay for this other assistant as well. So. I mean, I don't have an issue in principle. I'm just saying I'd, I'd like to think that through a little more. That's all. <clears throat> Vice Mayor, I was looking at the, may I, Mayor? Sure. I was uh, looking ahead a little bit at the capital improvement. Could you summarize what you're saying? So on the capital improvement side, I was just saying with the recreation, there's always a demand for updating somewhere in the capital improvement. If it's fences at Riverside Field, if it's the Sisler Field that's running into some issues, if it's Discovery Cove, if it's one of our parks, whatever it is, there's always a demand that we typically can't catch. We have to push something year over year, right? And so that's what I was saying. With the, It could be designated like a third, a third, and a third to land preservation. Obviously, that's a no-brainer, right? But the recreation fund would just be like additional funds that Tom and Mark, or the city manager and the public works director, can utilize to help the parks basically get and additional Going things. back, though, you're talking about utilizing the code enforcement funds? Right. You're saying they're unrestricted right now. They're unrestricted right now, yes. They're the general fund. And Correct. And we're just using them to balance different aspects of the budget, and you're saying they would be better utilized for, like, beautification, capital improvement, recreation, et cetera, right? Right, yeah. I think, you know, I think that makes sense given that in the, in the way that we're obtaining them, right? The way we're obtaining them through code enforcement is, you know, through code enforcement, you're, you're levying a fee on someone who's, you know, not abiding by our codes or not taking care of their house or whatever. So I think that it makes it makes sense to recognize the funds going back to some form of beautification or some form of a capital improvement. So I agree with you from that perspective. Uh, Mr. Harry, how much money are we talking about? Well, the way it sits right now, you have the excess 25000 which is built into the budget right now. And as the city manager was saying, if you took out one of those positions, that's 61000 That's You're restricting more money, which isn't in the budget now. That 61000 would come off that 184000 you have available for spending, so leaving about 120000 available for spending. Positions for well. the positions or whatever you deem you want to use them for. Well, we have to decide what's, what's more important right now to make sure we have the extra position that um, Mr. Function is asking for or to allocate those funds to uh, where you recommend. So I, I guess my other question was, historically, you said you looked at it with a clerk being in there. What does a clerk make? I can't remember. It's like 35000 uh, With budget? benefits, probably about 50000 thousand. So it doesn't really matter then. Mm -hmm. So. Currently, the, the way it sits now and the way it was proposed, which hasn't been discussed with the city manager, the way it was discussed was that the code enforcement officer wouldn't be involved with this total cost. Um, but the way it's being proposed is that there's a balance of $25,000 after expenses. Um, yeah, again, estimate. Remember, if we end up if we end up getting one of those years where we had $175,000 of revenue, there could be $50,000 added to that um, at the end of the year. If we I don't want to say a good year, but if we have a year of people not wanting to comply and getting fines, the, the unknown money in the general fund is that extra money. So it could be 20. Now, if we have a bad year on claims, everybody complies, then that money, that 25 could be less. But there's the potential for that extra money instead of not going into the general fund to be dedicated towards something also. We just don't know that until we get to about three quarters of the year, um, you know, where we are in, in fines. And we've had some years, and I think this year is one where we've had some pretty big fines come in. So, um, again, there, there isn't an extra pot of money that could come in that could be dedicated to somewhere above that $25,000. We just can't say now how next year is going to go. So it's $25,000 out of the general budget is what technically it would be 
yeah. then now allocated towards preservation, recreation, and beautification. And it's going to affect the position if we're going to get the position that uh, Mr. French is asking mm -hmm. for. I don't know how no, he connected to that position. I don't, I don't quite connect it to that position. It's unrestricted regardless. Yeah. We can always go back in mid-year and check that out, can we? How much re revenue we're getting in? Yeah. Yes. And then we can decide that. Okay. I'm fine with putting the resolution on the board uh, second meeting in September to discuss it. I guess, uh, Vice Mayor, if I could, just to summarize the idea, I know we've been discussing it. Basically, you just want to divvy up percentages of the code enforcement fund to p get put back into beautification stuff for the city Ultimately, and land preservation yeah. stuff. Yeah, and recreation. Yep. So I think it makes sense from a principal standpoint, just being that, you know, a lot of residents in the past have complained, oh, you guys are just dinging me, dinging me, dinging me to go into this fund that could end up paying for whatever. Whereas now it would be, you know, we're, we're justifying it as our code enforcement funds that we're putting on, similar to what Commissioner Terrapani said, that we're levying on people for having blighted properties as going back into beautifying other areas of the city or different park, uh, park areas or land preservation, you said? Right, yeah. Do you have a, a percentage in mind that it would go? I, I mean, I would just do three even. It was kind of my thought process that they could break out three, a third each. Okay, and just to clarify, no... The position currently tonight that Mr. Function is proposing, that's not connected to this money, right? No. Okay. It's not connected to any money. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Fundamentally, I agree with, with that. To further summarize, I don't think that we should be balancing the budget with levied money from fines. I think that that money should go to like almost like a bonus pot, right? It goes back into beautification, recreation, and land preservation. I agree with you fundamentally there. But just understand, it's not, it's not balanced. You see the list of items. Um, when you get code enforcement revenues, we're trying to have that revenue offset the cost for code enforcement. So these are all actual costs of code enforcement. Now, if, if you don't want them to come from the funds that come in to fund, um, then that's one thing. But, um, but these monies here, <laughs> are dedicated from what comes in to pay for almost like an enterprise fund almost they paid. We have never used, I mean, he called it a code for He probably should have put the, the clerk in here. Remember, we had a police officer. The police officer's money never came from this, you know, kind of allotment that we do the money towards the, the I forget what the title was when we had an officer. Now we got Ms. Shoes, who's a civilian. Um, so the two positions, only one has been counted for in the, okay, this revenue pays, pays for this. It doesn't have to, but understand it somewhere in the general fund has to pay for it and stuff. So, so again, it's not, we don't take that revenue money and necessarily balance it. It, it's, it, it pays for actual items in, in, in code enforcement, and, uh, you know, again, almost like the golf course or enterprise fund. It's just, it's just not an enterprise fund. It just goes back for it. Now, you can dedicate the money to whatever you want to do, but again, there's the price of it, of what you don't do from this list still has to come out of the general fund. It has to come from somewhere else within the budget. So do you have any issue, if, as long as the revenues that are generated pay for the, the position or the expenses that are associated with code enforcement, the excess can be allocated towards what the 25,000 we expect and anything over it, yes, it, it should go to whatever you want to dedicate the funds to. If we have a $200,000 a year, you know, you could have 75 or 100,000 in that bottom column on that bottom number. Again, we're speculating on, on next year. Yeah. So I agree with, with the overage of this, whatever it is. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it, we, we can get for you the, the, the allotment maybe for the last five years of how much has come in to kind of see where that average is and, and where to go. I know this is going to be a good year. This has got to add up to a good year, which would be, in essence, more than this 25 for this pat, not the year coming up, but this year. Um, so, yes, that extra money that's not allotted, um, that would be you know, that would be fine to, to dedicate to, to divide into thirds or whatever this board wants that money to go towards. 
R repeat those, uh, what, do you, what do you want to spend them to? Recreation, what's the other one? So it's land preservation fund. We have a land preservation fund. I think I believe it's not funded anyway right now. Um, the only way it's funded is when the city sells a property and we just um, expense all, that, all the money out of that or depleted it. Um, so it would be land preservation fund, beautification and recreation improvement. And that could be from capital or it could be non-capital. And right now, the way it's budgeted, it would be $25,000. Um, but we initially talked about having some type of plan before budget season, but the way this got wrapped in this year is that these funds were not allocated out already. So we could prepare for next budget season by doing some type of ordinance or resolution in the fall. Um, so for fiscal year 23, that's already built out. Um, but this year it looks like it'd be 25,000. So it'll be a little bit over $8,000 per, uh, per fund. Right. It's not really that much to you. Uh... Okay. I'm okay with it. Everybody agrees with that? We can't vote on it, so we have to agree with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. So just so we are taking the city managers, I guess, kind of compromise into consideration there where we're saying we'll fund the position and then everything after the position will divvy up in the thirds. All the left, all the essentially it. Yeah, right. Okay, I'm good with that. Vice Mayor Terrapin, you okay with that? I am. Vice Mayor, there's yeah. four of you that are good with it. I'm still want to think about it, but that's okay. Okay, anything else? Anything else, the general fund? budget follow-ups. Mayor, two quick things, uh, if you don't mind. Um, on the river dredging, we, there's nothing involving the general fund with the river dredging. Is that correct? Or we, right, correct. Okay. Um, and then the other, and I'm going to mention it, and I think this is okay. Uh, city manager and I spoke about it. Ms. Jacobs and I talked about it as well. There's a lot of um, old magnetic tapes that are recordings of old timers sharing their experiences in Tarpon Springs that need to be converted to, uh, to digital. Um, and um, I think the city clerk's going to look into some other cities that may have a contract for doing that, and that may come up during the year sometime. The Historical Society has them. We have them as well. There's some duplications, but at some point we need to convert those from magnetic to digital uh, so we don't lose them. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, and I hope maybe we had talked about that, and, and hopefully as we look at the end of this budget, if there's money available to that. I'm, ho I'm hoping to do it with money in this, this cycle ending in October that we have left that we, we're thinking right now, we've got two months, so I don't want to jinx it, but, but I think we'll have that money available in the clip to be able to do that in, in this budget. And then the, um, the, the personnel matters we're going to move on to, is that correct, Mayor, in a minute? Personnel the personnel matters that we're going to talk about. This is just general. Just the uh, general fund. This is just the follow-ups that we had. Okay. And the answers, the response were delivered back to us. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We move down to the uh, salary survey. Just like to remind you everyone that uh, several months ago, I requested the survey to help us understand uh, where we're standing to compare our cities uh, our, uh, with the other, uh, to compare our salaries to the other cities. And the information we receive is exactly what I thought. There are some positions that are not compatible to, uh, to the other cities, and uh, we want to make sure that we we'll retain our uh, employees here. So I'm ask, uh, we ask Mr. LeCourtis to provide us with a plan that over time to bring these positions where they can, should be and be compatible to the other cities. And I'm going to ask Mr. Lecouris, what kind of a plan did you come up with, sir? You're, as I said the last meeting, those things we figure and go through department by department based on the survey, and we'll have that to you on the second meeting of August. We'll have those, we'll have those plans to you. Okay. At a regular meeting, because you do vote on those with the positions and everything at a regular meeting, um, because they're they involve reclassifications, positions and stuff. So, so we will be discussing public meeting, second meeting in August. That's where we've, we've always done this and, and brought back to you. And we'll be looking at the salary survey. And if you remember from past year, there's usually a sheet of 
of, of items of reclasses, regrades, changes of positions, um, and uh, we, we are working on that, and that's when it will be brought to you. Thank you. That's including the, uh, the, the race that we're going to give to regular employees, too. Yes. Right? Thank you. Uh, that's all I got. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, I have something on that. Vice Mayor Carr, do you got anything no. on that? Not in the survey, no. Okay. Commission Terrapani? Uh, no, I said what I needed to say last meeting on that. Commission Donovan? I'm good with the survey, no. Commission Vetikuris? On that last item, uh, we've had the Budget Advisory Committee involved. I would assume this would be passed through them before it came back to us. Uh, this plan that you're talking about? You're not talking about positions now, right? We're talking no, no, no. The, the salary survey, the plan that you had asked the city manager for to make some adjustments, and he's going to come back, I think you said, the second meeting in August. Yeah. And I, and I know that, Mayor, you like to involve the Budget Advisory Committee in these matters, so I was just suggesting would that be something that would be done as part of this process so when it does come back it had already been Yes, we would try to debate the week before the commission meeting. We try to do like we did this time and have a meeting with them. That's good. Thank you. Good idea, yeah. Mr. McCoy will love it. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Thank you. Ms. Heller's here with us, too. Thank you for coming. Uh, any, any, any comments, any other comments on the, uh, on the salary survey before we move on to the next one? Okay. Okay. The uh, next is follow-ups on the new positions. Mayor, I'm sorry. I've got one on the salary. Oh, sure. Um, there's been discussions in the past, and I just, out of curiosity, um, the Board of Commission, it's been discussed. So I do write a check each month now to be a commissioner. Um, it would be nice to have the salary cover at least, like, the insurance and dental for a family. Um, that's just something to look at. I would like to, I mean, at least get a, a, a feeling on the board. I think it's like 35 bucks a month I have to write a check for. I don't know. Ron probably will let me know. Um, but just something to think about as a commission. It's something we've talked about in the past. Hasn't always been a favorable, like, that we're doing this for the love of tarpon, which we are. But we're also exerting a significant amount of time. And so possibly the budget advisory board, we could direct them as a board to look at a little bit closer for us. I'm sorry, how much is a month? I think it's like $35 at the right a month. I don't remember what it is. I know I don't need one. I don't know if my, anybody else does. Uh, Mayor, from my perspective, um, I don't use insurance. I you don't use any of the benefits. So there's a savings there, and, and Ron wrings his hand because it went back into the general fund. So I think that if it's $35, I think something like that can be very easily accommodated. Uh, just really, just yeah. the fact that I, I don't have anything, I think that's about 10000 Is that right, Ron? About yeah. 10000 The benefits, dollars. yes. Yeah, so. Commission, Don, uh, Commission Donovan, you have any comments on that? I mean, I wouldn't want to raise the salary or anything close to that, but if it's coming from what would already have been allotted from another commissioner, then I'm okay with it. Yeah. Commissioner Terrapin? I think we should be coming out of pocket to be a commissioner. I mean, it's it's pretty taxing as it is. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it was floated by uh, uh, Mayor Archie a few years ago on his last year, so he was you know not compromised when he floated the idea of raising the salary. I mean, you know, I could go either way on it. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, but I, you know. I could argue in either direction. You know, if you raise the salary, maybe you get more qualified people. Who knows? I mean, but as of right now, I don't. I don't really have a desire to do it. But I don't think that a commissioner should have to come out of pocket to be a commissioner. I can tell you that. Okay. So, in other words, you you support that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I don't have a problem with it. Of course, I'm, looks like uh, you probably use that benefit. Uh, right, no. Commissioner? Huh? Uh, no. So. You only have one person, 35 bucks a month, we can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Now we go into the uh, new positions. Uh, you know what? Uh, as you know, we received a uh, request from the city manager and from the directors to fill new positions. 
Well, all these positions are very, very, very important to all the directors. If you ask them, they will tell you their position is the most important. But uh, we cannot fill all these positions at the same time. So we needed to uh, prioritize those positions based on the uh, importance of the position and the economics. So we asked the uh, Budget Advisory Committee to work with the Finance Director and the Active City Manager, Mr. Smith, to review and to analyze the ES position and to provide us their recommendations. Um, with us today is Mr. McCloy. He's the chairman of the, of the uh, Budget Advisory Committee, and now we're going to ask him if you please come to the podium and present to the, uh, to the board uh, your analysis and their recommendations from uh, the Budget Advisory Committee. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, I want to talk about first about a meeting that we had yesterday about 2.30 and went to, we had a hard stop we had to quit at four. Uh, we took this extremely serious. Obviously, we're not going to come back and tell you uh, we recommend a ta uh, tax increase to six points. You know, that'd be stupid. We're not going to do that. We're not going to tell you to go into the emergency funds. What I, what we set out to do, and present was Ron, Paul, and and the budget uh, advisory committee. Mark could not be there uh, due to emergency. But we did have the benefit of your July 23rd memo, which you gave to the board. Um, goal started out to be professional in our presentation. If we're gonna have a recommendation on people, headcounts, where's the money gonna come from? Okay. We would have liked to have had that done all within yesterday's meeting, but we got cut short. That's why I'm going to give a handoff in a few minutes to Ron, because we were talking about numbers and you know they were all bouncing around. Ron will present where the funds come from to pay for this. Doesn't do any good to have one without the other, right? If you can't pay for it, and it doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to start off with the positions that we talked about. Now, if you can see, eh, just jump back, just stay back, because that's the recommendation that we had at four o'clock. I want, I be, we had, we did not have full information that we wanted, obviously, you need the finances and the position and the benefit of uh, uh, Mark's input in his memo. Let me just say the first four positions, I believe, were pretty well covered in Mark's memo. Uh, let me talk about the last two positions. Uh, just cybersecurity. I know we talked a little bit at the last meeting about this, but when I think about that position, I think about it, I use the analogy, it's like your home, okay? You could very easily not put insurance on your home, right? And at the end of the year, if you don't have an issue, you saved that money. But we're all pretty smart. You're going to cover your assets. The cyber security, you can't, cannot tell how much it's going to save until you have a problem. And, there's, and if you have a problem, it's probably going to be a big problem financially. Um, you've all heard the stories could Tarpon Springs be hit? Certainly possible. Mayor, Mayor presented some information last time. Um, we just felt that 
that that position was necessary. It's not going to be an income earning, but it's going to protect our entity, to think of it that way. It's like a little bit like insurance. Uh, we recommended that position. The second one is sustainability. Um, that's going to be a, obviously it's all a commission decision, but if you're going to do and say your sustainability, you need, need it to be successful. One person top that's driving it down. Now there's going to be sustainability within other positions such as Paul's, I mean, sustainability is going to be driven down. But if you simply leave it within, you know, somebody's job spec, uh, you know, here it is, here's your main functions and down here, you won't have a s sustainability. This person needs to push it, lead it, make it part of the mindset of all departments and be their reason for coming to work every day. They're going to have to have the cooperation and support of the other areas. So it's, it's going to be a question if sustainability is uh, important to the board, we're just highly recommending you have one person who leads it, thinks it, and pushes it down through the organization. Okay, maybe we could jump over to the next slide. And that's where we're coming up, you know, previous recommendation. We're coming up against a deadline, a hard, and we had financial questions. So those six positions, that's what we're looking at. Now, how do we fund it? Fair question. Okay. That's where we were talking about, I'm going to say rough numbers at that point, but the takeaway, and Ron will present this in the next few slides uh, how we would fund that. Again, one piece without the other doesn't make any sense. But I'd just like to make one last recommendation. I, you know, I, I did take the time to read through all the other positions. I, what we co concentrated on here was next year's budget. I'd ask between the city manager and the board to look at the other positions and, you know, uh, with a three-year time frame, let's say, categorize those. There may be some that, you know, that you say, eh, I don't think we ever want to fill. Okay, I used to just take them off. But keep it as an active going forward. I don't know my crystal ball in the future. I don't know if we have a big grant coming that would allow us some flexibility. I'm just saying that I think right now this pushes the limits of the budget. We tried to squeeze it. Um, how, what could we do? Uh, but keep active those others, discuss it. And if you think some should be eliminated, you know, like there's no way in heck we're going to next three years, just eliminate it. I think uh, the department managers did a good job of justifying it. Now the question is, what can we, do we want to do that? And what can we afford? And if I could turn it over to Ron at this point be, and come up with I believe you might show two alternatives on funding or one. Well, this was your, I mean. Yeah, what, I'm talking about your next slides. Okay. Yeah, but what they had asked you to do as a, as a committee was go through and, you know, select the recommended positions, which you did, the planner, the construction field inspector, the public services assistant director, public works technician one, cybersecurity engineer, and sustainability coordinator. <coughs> you know, they asked you to look into the, some funding ideas. But my thinking is, I can't make a 
good recommendation without knowing both sides. And I know we've talked about right. it. So from a financial and how does it fit within the budget, I want to turn that over to you if right. I could. And like I said, like I said, just going over the funding, you know, the, the planner was general fund, field inspector split 50, general fund 50, water and sewer fund, uh, public services assistant director, all 100% water and sewer fund. The technician won, 50% CRA, 50% general fund, since the beautification work in the CRA. And the bottom two here, we talked about, you know, reduction in engineering consulting fees would be a possibility. And over, over here is like the total salaries with benefits, which totals the 477506 before you go on, Ron, let me put a caveat on this. Um, this whole thing with salary and positions has gotten a lot different from last year's. So I just want to say that I haven't had a chance to talk with Ron. I mean, I've seen this funding, um, and there's some differences I have. I've not had a chance to get with Ron on his proposal to find. I know going back to how we originally was going to do this with the three positions I asked for, the other positions, and the other ones. I know, Ron, you have funded in the budget now, as it's before the commission, you have those top three funded. Am I correct? You have those funded already in this budget. Correct. So we're really talking about the funding for the other sets of, of, of positions that are on there. And uh, Ron's going to give these to you, but I'm still going to need more time to do it. For instance, one area I am real queasy about taking any positions and more funding out of the CRA. I would rather dig back in and find, I, I just think with some projects coming up in the future in the CRA, we've already got a position and a half. Um, I think you may see on both runs and on this one, I'm, I'm real reluctant. I'd rather go back in with Ron um, between now and the next meeting. That's one area that I can see. There may be some more, but just when Ron presents it to you, I'm not sold on either of the two fundings yet. Really what I want to get an idea on tonight for is what positions do you want me to find funding for? Um, we've got some ideas about the funding. Um, um, again, hopefully you've already funded one of the three I wanted. We'll have a consensus. The other two are. Um, I'm still in the position. We need two public. It's almost like policing. One police officer equates three because there's three shifts. I think in public works, if we're going to do something to enhance what we're doing there, we need two positions and not one. And again, I, you know, we, we've seen, and since I wrote this memo on the Friday, we've seen the, the push for sustainability. We still have an issue um, of what you what you call, I mean, we've talked about a sustainability coordinator for a long time, and all of a sudden we've gotten this discussion about the director, uh, a director position. Um, we have been looking at positions to quite, what the, what the scenario is, is that we're not up with Oldsmar, Dunedin, and Clearwater on sustainability. They all have coordinators. We wrote this position as a coordinator. Um, talking with the city manager of Clearwater about it, they're not even ready to push their coordinator position to director yet. So we've got a problem in that one about we still have a dispute and it's something I'm gonna to have to sit down with, with uh, Paul Smith and probably individually everybody on the sustainability because we need to try to get on board on what the process is. But besides that, let's just use a sustainability position for now and, and stuff. We kind of need to know where you want to go with that and look for funding on that, however, however it is. Um, so I'd rather more look at the positions that you want us to try to fund, maybe look at some of these ideas, um, but I'm not sure either of these proposals, I may need to do some looking at uh, how they're funded. Thank you. Ron, do you have any uh, comments? Up. If not, i got a question <laughs> to ask. Okay. Well, this, you know, we were batting, you know, like they say, they had to get done at 4 o'clock. They were batting around ideas, you know. Uh, what it involved around was a bottom two position, cybersecurity and sustainability. We had talked about either 100% general fund or we were talking about 50% split general fund, water and sewer, because they both have a water and sewer aspect to them, so. On th this slide here, 
hopefully it's not too confusing. I know I'm a numbers guy and stuff, but we got the general fund, and these were the positions. Print planner, field inspector, technician one, cybersecurity, sustainability. This table is at based on 100% to the general fund. Total general fund cost 317,000. We have 184,000 available. We would still need $133,000 to fund, in the general fund, to fund these five positions based on 100% charge to the general fund. Now it's still, here's this one position split 50% to the CRA. And here's a water and sewer fund with uh, the public services assistant director 100% and the field inspector, which is split 50-50 with the, with the uh, general fund and water and sewer fund. And if there's no questions on that slide, I'll go to the next one because we talked about a 50-50 split with the positions. Same slide, basically we've taken the sustainability and the, and the cyber security engineer. Now 50% general fund, 50% water and sewer. 231,000 total. Here's the minimum available, 184,000. We need 47,000, almost 48,000 to cover these positions within this format. Same position, same numbers with the CRA, but now we've got you know, a little bit more money down here being charged to the water and sewer fund, 50% you know, general fund, 50% water and sewer. And it's important to mention that and when we did the revenue sufficiency study, we did put in positions in the, in the revenue sufficiency study to, to cover some of these positions. Plus, this is a lot where they talked about using consulting engineering fees. That's where a lot of the engineering fees for consulting are within the water and sewer fund. So between those two slides, that's where we had the 100% and then trying to allocate the 50% here. I don't know if anybody's got any questions on that. Could you go back to the last slide real quick? Okay, I just wanted to get that number one more time of the money we'd have to find. Um, and uh, real quick for Mark, uh, what are your big three again? I know the principal planner and the public services assistant director. What, what was the other position you absolutely needed at the last meeting? That construction field inspector. Okay. Top three. Okay. All right. All right. I got some comments. Um, I have comments too. I do too. Uh, on, the, uh, on, on the memo that I came from uh, <coughs> budget advisory, Mr. McCloy. Uh, he has a recommendation there. It says uh, uh, reduction of the uh, professional fees refers to engineering consultant fees and also contract inspectors. So can you explain that and what, what money is involved with that? Well, like I say, a lot of those engineering and consulting fees are in the water and sewer fund. There are some fees in, in, in the general fund, not much, and maybe a little bit in building development, and I really wanted to get with you know, Director Powell first before saying if he's got any money any, or he can make any cuts there. But most of the engineering services, it's based on the capital project. Most capital projects are in the water and sewer fund where there's the engineering fees. So what's the bottom line? How do you feel about all these? I mean, I'm okay with a 50-50% this way because uh, the uh, cyber security engineer is actually going to be doing a lot of work for uh, the water department and other departments as well. It's not going to be just for general fund. And the same thing for the uh, sustainability coordinator. Correct. Yeah, he's going to be doing work for many departments, not just for general fund. Yes, yeah, we talked about that yesterday, yes. Yes. Okay. Vice Mayor Carr, any comments? Yeah, I've got a couple comments. Um, so the three, uh, uh, Mr. McCloy and Ms. Hales, thank you for being here. I appreciate uh, everything you all did in your committee. Um, <clears throat> it's greatly appreciated. So um, I, there's a couple things I don't necessarily uh, fully agree with. Um, I would follow the city manager on the CRA fund. I do understand the, the recommendation for it. I just think it's we need to do brick and mortar projects for the CRA specifically, but I appreciate the creativity that you guys took for, with that one as a whole. Um, so with the public services assistant director, I think that should be public services assistant director and sustainability coordinator. Uh, I, I've mentioned I don't support sustainability coordinator by itself. Uh, I think it needs to be in the public services department. Um, as a whole, I think it, it should be an engineer right now. It shouldn't be someone out of college um, that came through a program. I think that that would be really a, a bona fide person that is um, 
that has experience, um, and I think Paul Smith's department would be perfect for that person. Uh, so to me, I think it would be best to have um, Public Services Assistant Director, Sustainability Coordinator um, to fall on that one. Um, when we go to Public Works Technician, as I said, I think it should fo be fully funded um, outside of the CRA. Um, so I don't know where that would be. And then um, the cybersecurity engineer, I, I'm in full support of that. Uh, I, I would question the pay grade. I think we could push that down a little bit. It's, it's really high. I mean, we're looking close to, I mean, you're looking at a, a major to sergeant salary at our police department, right, um, for something like that. So I do understand IT, there's a demand for uh, IT, but I do think that's something we'd want to look at. Uh, I would support something like a 70-30 split. Um, I know there's a significant amount of money. It's like, what, $10 million coming through um, from the go federal government right now, and a lot of it's probably going to be spent in water and sewer uh, based on what my understanding is from the city manager. Uh, unless further um, clarification comes out uh, for the ability to be able to use those funds, but I think it's going to be a lot of the, the funds are going to go towards water and sewer. So there should be some additional flexibility in the water and sewer funds. Uh, with that additional revenue. So a 70-30 split, I think with that, um, with, with the cybersecurity, with the pay grade reduction would, um, I think, solve for that one. Um, and then again, like I said, I think the sustainability coordinator should wrap under the public services um, dr assistant director. So uh, summary, uh, principal I agree with, uh, construction field director I agree, agree with, um, as is um, the public services assistant director, I think the sustainability coordinator should drop into there. The public works tech, um, I don't know where the funding, this other 50% would come from, but uh, as long as it's not from the CRA. And a cybersecurity engineer, I think it should be 70-30 from the water sewer fund with a reduction of the pay grade. Don't know where that would land, but that's my opinion on these. Thank you. Commissioner Terpin. I'm pretty, uh, pretty much in line with what the vice mayor just said. Um, I support the principal planner. I think that we spent a fortune last year in uh, consulting services for the planning department. Um, the construction field inspector, I, I support. My, my hope would be that as we continue to make that, that uh, department more automated with some of our um, funding that we've actually done in this year's budget for some automation in terms of uh, permitting and whatnot, that you know, that would kind of offset some of the needs for an actual uh, body. Um, the public services uh, assistant director, I, um, I definitely support that. Um, the public works tech, I, I, I support, but I would not want to fund out of the, out of the CRA. Um, I've had issues with funding things out of the CRA salaries in the past. Um, the cyber engineer, I think, is definitely important, and I would agree with the 50-50 split on that, and I also think that we should at least strive initially to um, bring that salary down a little bit. Um, one thing that I'll say, and I don't know where it would, where it would land, maybe if it's with the public service uh, assistant director or with the construction field inspector, is that we spent a fortune in engineering uh, consulting fees. Um, something that I've talked with the city manager about in the past is hiring a, a city engineer, um, as the city had a number of years ago. I mean, even from like an in-house project perspective, we spend a fortune in engineering services and consulting fees. So I think that, that that is something that, whether we do it this year or the commission looks to it in years following, I think that to have someone in-house that is a civil engineer that can help us, you know, design with our, some of our design build things or even just, you know, give us better uh, ideas or estimates or work on plans, I think that that is a way for sure to fund a position and, not, and to eliminate a lot of consulting fees. So ultimately, I'd like to do that this year, and I'd like to see it blended with one of these other positions that we're talking about. Um, as far as the sustainability coordinator, um, I'm hesitant to jump with both feet into that, especially without having a clear idea of what the job description would be at this point. Um, I think it would be, you know, it would be hard for me to fund that position without a better understanding of what exactly the role would be. I mean, we have an idea, right? Um, but I would definitely like to see more of a hard uh, job description, and then if we were to do it, I agree with uh, Vice Mayor that it should be blended with one of these other positions and, and more than likely fall under the Public uh, public Services Department or Public Works Department. Um, and then if we were, oh, and that, did I say, I said the cybersecurity, I agree with 50-50 and coming out of the Water Department, given that that's where probably where 
one of the areas where we're most vulnerable as it relates to security um, and fees and things of that nature. So in a nutshell, I'd love to see an in-house engineer. Um, and we could potentially blend that with the construction field uh, position or um, maybe the public works tech. I don't know. We, we, we might need to get creative there, but I think that it would be beneficial to the community to have that position, a civil engineer in-house. Um, principal planner, again, I support. Um, that, you know, just the savings that we would have in consulting fees with as much work needs to be done in that department and as busy as that department is uh, over, the, over the last few years, including this year and ongoing, hopefully. Um, public works, I don't want to fund through CRA. Told you about sustainability. Cybersecurity, I covered. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. Commissioner Terrapin, just for clarification. The sure. civil engineer, this is an addition position? I mean, ultimately, I would like to see it blended with one of one of the positions that we're asking for now. I don't know where we would do that or how we would do it, but I think that if we ask Mr. Herring for a breakdown of our engineering consulting fees that we spend, you would clearly see what I'm talking about. So I think that that would be, it's something that I have talked with the city manager about in the past, and obviously, unless it's budget season, it's hard to really take that conversation to the next level. But I think that I feel very strongly about that position, as, as strongly as I do about the top three that are being recommended to us tonight. Okay. I'm not really sure exactly what the pay scale would be on civil engineering if we wouldn't consider that into the budget right now. Uh, I don't know, perhaps uh, Mr. Lequeris can give us uh, his take on the uh, on that uh, construction field in, uh, inspector is this something that a civil engineer will do or is it totally different? I think it's probably different. It is different. Yeah, the public services assistant director that pay grade is more around the the PE civil engineer I think. And I, I say blending it because you know, in theory there would be times when he wouldn't be acting as a as a civil engineer, right? So then you could blend the job description where he could be doing other things. Um, but I, I think that would probably be the most logical place to hire a dual position, public service assistant director and uh, professional engineer. You do both. Correct. And, and maybe you might have to, to bump that salary a little bit. You probably would, right? But well, at the same time, you would have I think civil somebody, engineer probably wants more than that. I, yeah. I agree. I agree. But I think that that position would pay for itself through the consulting fees that we spend. Mm -hmm. We spend like four hundred thousand dollars a year. In yeah, only four hundred. So I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. And some of which he it, he wouldn't probably be able to cover, and you would still have to contract out. But even if you cut that number in half. Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith, are you there? Would you please give us your opinion? Mm -hmm. Based on what uh, Commissioner Terrapeni recommended, the uh, civil engineer can be combined with the uh, one position with the public service assistant director. It might be something we have to talk about because that's a whole, you're heading a whole different dynamic. Um, I don't know if you're ready I mean, to I've talk got about a, that right now. I've Mr. got to get an idea ahead. what it's all about, you know. Mayor, I've got an opinion as well. I haven't had a chance to speak at all yeah, well, about anything. We get to you. Well, why is Mr. Smith being asked a question without my input first? We'll get to you. One minute. Just wait a minute. Go ahead, Mr. Smith. I'd just like to make a few general comments about that. This is, I understand it's a very good point being made about the cost of the uh, consultancies that we put out each year. but. I would say maybe the simplest way for me to respond to that is we have studied other cities like Dunedin and others that have city engineer, not just one, but actually multiple engineers on staff and their consulting fees are still, I mean, beyond ours by a lot. So my point to you is I don't think, you know, your goal is, I understand it, I don't think it's going to be achieved as much as perhaps you'd want by adding a position like that. And it really comes down to the breadth of engineering experience that you need to respond to the various things, all the expertise. It's very hard to find in one person, and um, other cities are finding that same thing. Um, as far as the position that I'm recommending for assistant, I am going to try to hire an engineer. That would be uh, something that would 
uh, work well in that role and because the idea would be for it to succeed into the director position at some point and I think you'd want that in a director position so that's about what I can add on that thank you Commissioner Dava, do you have any comments yeah thank you mayor uh, mr. McCoy is that a Steelers hat you have on no, I'm just I'm I'm normally very hesitant to trust a Steelers fan, but um, you did you did a really really good job. I really like the budget advisories recommendations for the positions. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your work uh, as a committee, uh, principal planner and the construction field inspector. I'm absolutely good with the public services assistant director. I understand the desire um, to maybe get something more out of that, but you know, Mr. Smith's been running it kind of shorthanded for a little while now, so I don't want to throw him a, a curveball last second. I'm, I'm good with what you described up there. Um, the public works technician uh, not being funded with CRA dollars is something that I think everybody that's spoken before me has mentioned. I, I agree with that, uh, but I do support the position. The cybersecurity engineer, uh, I agree that we could try to lower the salary a little bit, not too much, but at least like 10 to 15K, because that'd be them jumping on immediately and making a lot of money. Um, so again, I'm, I'm not diminishing the need for the position. I agree uh, to get a cybersecurity engineer on board, but you know, the $110,000 including benefits, that's, that's a little much. Maybe at least try to lower it by 10 or something like that and see what we come up with. Uh, the sustainability coordinator position, I, I support it. I, I think I said last meeting that I like positions that pay for themselves. Um, and I think in staff's job description, I, I really like the grant writing function that was listed on there. I think that's something we could use really well as a board to maybe have quarterly or monthly you know, funding updates come our way uh, and just see which different grants we're applying to where we're at in the process, what they need on our end to apply for them. I just think that's a position where it's a lot of untapped potential um, from grant dollar perspective. So as far as the um, positions are concerned, I, I support the budget advisory's recommendations um, just with the, the caveat on not using the CRA dollars for the public works tech um, and trying to lower the salary a little bit for the cybersecurity engineer. Yeah. Hmm. Commissioner Tukiris. Um First of all, I uh, thank you, Mr. McClure, and the Budget Advisory Committee. Um, I, I support your recommendations um, uh, as you presented them in terms of priorities, but I also think uh, we need, as you pointed out, we need to give the city manager some time as well to uh, repackage these in some form and to have discussions with the staff with regard to the, the funding aspect of it. Um, the, um, also, your recommendation um, for funding all of the positions. I think all of the positions, first of all, uh, City Manager LaCourse, let me ask you a question. These positions wouldn't be coming forward from the departments unless you concur with them. Is that correct? I mean, if, if, some, if a department head came up with somebody, something, and you, and you didn't agree with it, you would tell them you don't agree with it, and that's where it ends there. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So my point is, all the positions that have come forward from the departments have got the city commissioner's concurrence. He's got higher priorities for the three that he mentioned. And I think that rather than me presuming that I know the department head's job more than they do, I would like to give the city manager some direction to take the department heads, have them sit down, do a little give and take. I know they work well with each other and come up with a three-year plan of funding all of the ones that have been requested. That's something the city manager and I talked about briefly uh, um, about a week ago. So I think that, to me, is the proper way to go. I don't want to second guess what department, why department heads think that this position is imp more important uh, or is important and why we would think it's not important. I, I'm not even sure why we would, we would even want to go there. So I'd like to give that that approach, the three-year, uh, the approach, uh, give the city manager an opportunity to, to create a plan over a three-year period to, to fund all of the positions, police, fire. Um, my pet peeve, as Mr. Function knows, is roads and streets and parks and parkways and beautification. Of all the comments, I won't call them complaints, all the comments that we get from the residents, it's street cleanliness. And that uh, grass, weeds, the whole thing, and that's something I've talked to the city manager quite a bit about over the last uh, year and a half. The, um, 
The, uh, and I also want to confirm, when the city manager asked Ron that the three positions were funded in this budget, that's not really accurate, right? That, that, that 80, 000, $180,000 is still, it is part of those, would be needed to fund those three positions, is that correct? Well, you've got the three positions, and take it, and remember, the one of them is funded out of the water and sewer fund, those three positions. Okay. That, that's leaving the two, the planner and the field inspector, coming out of the 184000 which still leaves some money. No, but I mean, the 184 is not in, a, in addition to the three positions that have already been funded. Right. Okay, that's all I need. So we need that money to fund those positions as well. You need them to fund the planner okay. position and the right. field inspector. Um, Mr. McCloy, I have a question uh, for you. Um, on the sustainability position, the city manager had um, two approaches. One was a coordinator and one was a director. The coordinator would work within a department, um, I think is the common way of describing it. The director would work for the city manager. Did, was that discussed with the budget advisory committee as far as what of those two approaches would be preferred or at least recommended? Uh, again, Mark could not be there. So I understand, would, but this is your, what, your, your, what your work, yeah. The feel for, uh, from the advisory committee was if we're really wanna take this on and be serious, you need to have somebody whose job every day is sustainability to work it down through the organization. Now, they're not going to be an island. Within uh, Paul, we, you know, so there's going to be certain part, certain people in their job spec that sustain, sustainability is an element along with this, this, this. It was just felt that to drive it, if we want to, really be serious about it, it's going to need a head, but it's going to need a lot of people within the organization, such as Paul and other people. That was our gut feel, to make it really, somebody who's, that's their, so an their job, day to day. That's what they wake up, they're on it in the morning, but they've got to pull the rest of the group together okay. to make it work. That's, okay. No, that I, I, that's I, I think you're describing, unless I'm mistaken, you're describing a director that is basically not within any particular department, or if they are in a department, it's understood that their sole responsibility is sustainability. Correct. Okay. But again, I just say they I can't understand. make sustainability work all by. It's going to take. Right. You know, no, I, the job I completely spec, but understand. But not somebody whose job spec it might be. You know, under the category and might be a, a 10% or 15%. Okay. They can contribute to the overall cost. That was our thinking. Right, okay. I, I'm, I'm more in favor, uh, you know, from my perspective, looking at it in a very, very simple way, um, and, and um, you know, we've got an economic development director, I think uh, Ms. Lemons does a really good job if we can justify an economic development director, we can certainly justify a sustainability uh, director, uh, especially with the amount of work that's coming down from the sustainability committee in the form of the action plan that we would be seeing in about six months or so. So um, I'd like to have that. Um, I, I'm not sure how we're gonna discuss it or anything like that, but that's something that, that we, we owe the sustainability committee an answer. Um, as far as the, um, in, in and, um, and maybe we could do a formal vote on this, and, and I've got some thoughts on that. Um, uh, there, anyway, we'll, we can talk about that. I don't wanna eat up any more time on this tonight as far as that goes, but my preference would be a, a sustainability uh, director just because of continuity. Um, the civil engineer, 25 years ago, I was double-hatted as city engineer and city manager. I was building director, then became building director and city engineer, then I was city engineer and city manager. And 25 years ago, life was a lot easier in the world of engineering. Today, it's become so specialized, the regulatory environment is so complicated 
you're not going to find one person that you, you'll be able to find one person to do just a little bit of what needs to be done but you're not going to find one person that's going to be able to do a lot of what you think needs to be done and so 25 years ago I would not have thought uh, of using a consultant today I, I believe one is absolutely needed and I think Mr. Smith is uh, kind of confirmed that in his statement so um, I'd, I'd like to continue with what we have um, I think the assistant public services director um, is going to be an engineer but I think he's probably or she is going to be probably more of an administrative type um, you know that's just my suspicion and the um, uh, again, the three positions that the city manager recommended, I don't have an issue with. It's just a matter of funding them. And then I want to remind the um, commission as well, uh, I'm not sure what the state title is, but it's the ARPA funds that we talked about. Right, American yeah. Rescue Plan. Right, and um, there's a state title for that program as well. We'll be getting that at some point. And some of that money, I think, could be used for a position uh, from the water and sewer infrastructure. Uh, but we, my point is, we, I wouldn't recommend banking it, <laughs> banking on using that money right now. But certainly, it could be used um, on a very uh, elementary basis until we actually grow into the positions that we're going to be talking about uh, coming down uh, to us over the next three years or so. So, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. LaCourse, I want to make sure that you have a clear direction because it seems like we all have different ideas. Um, I'd like to uh, summarize what I, I would like to see is, first of all, I, um, I agree with the uh, recommendation from the Budget Advisory Committee, and I want to thank uh, Mr. McCloy and Ms. Hills that are here tonight, and please give my thanks to everybody in the uh, committee. Um, in regards to the... Uh, two uh, positions, they're not um, clear how we're going to fund it. We have different uh, opinions, different ways of doing that. If you please take a look at it. And during the, uh, the next uh, work session, please let us know after you, you discuss it with your uh, directors. And, and if, but there are some very good recommendations that it came from uh, the Budget Advisory Committee to, uh, uh, if we have a reduction in professional fees, refers to engineering, consultant fees, and uh, uh, inspection fees, perhaps we can actually cover these mm -hmm. expenses. Um, in regards to the uh, uh, sustainability, I uh, support the position, but I think it should be a coordinator position uh, based on what I see from the other uh, cities uh, in the area. This is how they have it. It is time. Uh, it's not 100% clear what all the responsibilities for the department is, but it's a good start. Uh, we look at it and then it can be reevaluated later and if it needs to be a director yes if, then you can we can do that but for right now I think this is the beginning we can stick with the uh, coordinator and work under the uh, umbrella of uh, Mr. Smith that's my opinion anything else that you want to relate to the city manager before we move on I, I think it's the mayor for the three-year the, the plan for bringing for funding all of the uh, I don't know if you want to do that as part of this budget cycle, but at some point we should see a plan for funding the positions that are being requested. Yeah. Um, that's the one thing. Um, the, the other part is the, um, and, and any addition ones as well. Um, I spoke to Mr. Function. <laughs> I think you had three, three roads and streets positions, and I, I would have thought more, but again, I defer to your um, expertise there and and, uh, um, and and I think it was the funding as far as the CRA funding city manager you're gonna you're, yeah. you're gonna come back the three-year plan I'm not sure how you're gonna deal with that the funding for the three positions that we're talking about right now is that three positions that we're talking about mirror or four all those positions they are being recommended on the list that's six yes okay yeah Okay. Can, can, can we do it by categories? Because uh, the more we're going on, the more. So we're all agreement on, on the first, the, the three that I recommended. I think I think this is what I got from everybody. We're we're set with those. Um, I'm trying to get what list you're going by because there there are several lists. Let, let me let's go back to my memo of July 23rd that you should have there were after the first budget meeting I talked about. I think we're all in agreement with that and the funding of that. 
Um, now we're down to the, the two positions. It's not two, it was really three, but we're talking about two when it comes from the Budget Advisory Committee. Public works, whether it's one or two positions and the IT position. I've heard the thing, I've heard, I've heard that those positions, we want me to look at funding. I've heard that, and again, the job description and the, where it, the payment and how much the salary is for IT, that came before my review of it. I've heard you that maybe needs to go down a little bit, and I probably agree with that when I was looking over it for tonight's meeting. So, but are we in agreement on, on at least one public works position and one IT position to come back with the funding on as it was recommended? That's what I got from there with a the caveat of, the public works position, the money's not out of CRA, and the IT position, we look at that salary and, and try to reduce that a little bit. That's where I am with that, that second category of, of jobs. Am I correct for everybody on, on those? I think the well, only thing that you're missing is we talked about having the IT position have some funding from water and sewer. Yeah. Once you, I mean, you look at it, but I think that was, no, did you say no, that? Yeah, that, that was pretty much consistent from, yeah. from that funding aspect on that position, that you want the position with that funding uh, like it was considered there. Right. Yes. That aligns from what I understand. Yes. And then, and then, uh, then of course, the, probably the, the catalyst that has drawn all of this attention to position. And, and let me go back to the positions. I, when I asked the, the staff to do positions, obviously we had a, a board, sustainability board, come up with a position um, and recommend the position. Um, what they don't know, I mean, their sustainability committee, their focus is on sustainability, not really on the sustainability management of the city. Um, obviously, sustainability position, whatever form, is in the future somewhere, whether it's now, next year, or down the road. But I wanted in this budget the staff to show you, especially with a position coming out of the blue up, um, coming in with all these other positions, what positions within the next one to three years? And if, if you look at the, the third part of my memo, I kind of gave you the, the three-year plan. I, I, I looked at all the positions again the department did, and I've kind of got you a, a one to three-year plan on those. Now, I will go back and meet with staff on these for a later time, but the positions for future consideration, I'm telling you all those positions, we shouldn't, they're not in the picture now, none of you've talked about them, but I've got a preliminary plan for the next one or three years. Several of them are dependent on grants, so we will do that. We will get with staff and further those, but if you see all those have my idea right now of where in one to three years that those positions should be funded. Um, and then, of course, we just got the sustainability position, what it is, you know, again, then the Budget Advisory Committee did not have a chance to get the full Paul Smith presentation on, on sustainability and the differences between the position. Even though Mr. McCoy said director, I think he's more coordinator because he even took my grade of 18 and dropped it to 17. Um, to do it, that's all in line with a coordinator position and it is a standalone position that all it does, it just works a little different in the format. If you remember at the beginning of sustainability, I gave you the equation of what I did in community policing in the police department. The trend was put a, put a officer in community policing and that solves your question. My approach was to make it departmental, like to build the whole department in the communication. And that's the strategy that I was very successful for. That's why our programs of community policing were some of the top, top in the state. And that's what we want to do with sustainability. We are building a whole organization of, of sustainability, not just one position. The position is going to come, but Paul Smith gave a very good presentation. Um, we'll give it to you. We'll give it before the Budget Advisory Committee to show the citywide, which we don't get a lot of credit for internally. Outside, I can tell you, in the county, we are highly respected 
in what we bring to the table when we come to a sustainability meeting with the coordinators from Dunedin, the coordinators from Oldsmar, Clearwater and stuff. When Mr. Smith comes representing sustainability, we're of high standard and the, the city managers have told me how much we bring to the county sustainability table when we're at these meetings of what we represent. If you read a lot about what the public writes in some of this letter, you would think that we don't have a sustainability component going now, and we really do. And, and Mr. Smith and I really have to work with the sustainability committee um, to, to have them understand we're on the same plane, we're on the same agreement. We're going about it a little different way because they're looking at it one way, I'm looking at the operations of the whole city. So that's an issue that's gonna, gonna go on for a while and stuff, but the question we've got on right now is in these positions and stuff, what are, what are you looking at me to do? We've heard the sustainability being in a position there. We've heard about it. You know, where are we? I think that's the last piece of, of where are we going forward in this budget right now with a sustainability position, what is it and where it is? And that's where we kind of need to go back with the five of you to see where we are. Do you want to, just to go down the line to tell us? You want to? Yeah. Well, I, I, already, I already said it, uh, Mr. Lecouris. I, I think this uh, sustainability position, uh, it will be very helpful. I think it's necessary to have it. But uh, I want to, I recommend to have it. I like to see that as a coordinator position, uh, not as a director yet. And perhaps later we can grow to that if we see that we need to. Uh, I know that. Uh, the uh, sustainability position is going to have a lot, lot of support from uh, several um, departments uh, of uh, Mr. Smith as well as Ms. Vincent and in other areas. Uh, so, uh, and looking at all the, uh, uh, the cities in the area, uh, they have that as a coordinator, not as a director. So, um, on me, I was. Uh Right now, I'm not in support of a sustainability coordinator by itself. I think it should be rolled into the public services assistant director or somewhere in that department where Paul Smith is currently. Um, but I think those two positions um, could be put together as one. Same. I support the creation of a sustainability coordinator. I do as well, and um, I'm not going to get hung up on the semantics. It's an independent, you're speaking of an independent, dedicated person working on sustainability. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to get hung up on whether they're a director at this point. I think your comment, Mayor, was a good one. They can grow into the responsibilities once we learn a little more about it, but I think that it's been very clear from many, many people in the community as well as the sustainability committee that this is what they want and, um, and I agree with them. It's a very large program that they've got. Um, I admire Mr. Smith. He's done an excellent job working with the sustainability committee, but at some point he's asking for additional help just to continue doing what he's doing. He's taking on a little bit more of a burden with the um, um, uh, the, the, the things that were added as far as the assistant goes is sustainability. Same thing with Mrs. Vincent. Um, but I still think that we need an independent person. So that's the three uh, votes. Also, um, Mr. Uh, or City Manager, of course, on, I, I appreciate the backup. You know, the, you know, what you describe as a three-year you know, the list and saying that you'll have them back in three years, but I'd actually like to have more of what year we should plan on hiring yes. these people and also the, the, the amount of money that we would need, that sort of thing, so we can plan that. In other words, we adopt that plan and that's actually worked into the budget before it gets to us the first time. That, that's what I'm looking for. Yes, and that's why I talked about the future meetings involving all the staff and hashing those out. Yes, I agree. And, and the same as we're going to do with the um, uh, passing the item back to um, the Budget Advisory Committee. Mayor, if we can, whatever plan C Manager LaCour should come up with before it comes back to us, if we could pass it through the Budget Advisory Committee, that would be very yes. helpful. So does that... 
the yes, uh, it was also the uh, budget advisory recommendation to have uh, uh, all the rest of the other positions to have a three-year uh, time frame plan. So that was one of their recommendations, uh, which I think it's a great idea to do. So, Mayor, just to be clear, we're we're talking about the six positions. Moving ahead with the six positions now, is that correct? Yes. Okay. I I didn't talk about the two of them, but if I'm fine with that. Commissioner Donovan, I didn't hear you say anything about this, all six. I heard about the sustainability coordinator. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with the budget advisor's recommendations with the caveats I said and that we had. I think you were just looking for consensus on that last piece. So yes. I think and you I got think it I now. Got, I think I have it. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, the cybersecurity engineer, I think everybody agreed to that. So, uh, Mr. Lecouris, is that clear now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. McClure, Mr. Hill, thank you so much. We're going to take a five minutes break and we'll be back. Thank you.
we now reconvene the budget work session at 7.38 p.m. The next item on the agenda is the CIP budget. And you find that on the uh, page 301. Mr. Herrick. Okay, we went over the CIP, just these slides briefly last week. I just thought I'd go over the same four slides to get it started <clears throat> on the CIP. Um, basically, in the CIP program, we got 11.4 million of CIP. The graph just breaks it out. I'm oh, sorry, wrong button again. You know, most of it is the 6.8 million, which is physical environment, which is basically water and sewer. So of the CIP, 6.4 million is coming out of the water and sewer fund for expenditures. And just as a, if you're trying to find information on the CIP, an executive summary, it's back in the back, pages 301 to 332. A couple good pages, 306 through 307, summarizes all the projects for five years on those two pages. 308 to 324 takes the CIP here, but it's broken out based on where they're being charged from the individual funds with the five-year projections for those funds. Page 325, 327 has all capital with the CIP plus some capital outlaying totals 13.5 million. Then the last two pages, 330 through 332, has some capital that's been requested but not in the budget uh, to be prioritized. These are some of the major capital projects in the budget, the police vehicles, fire vehicles, the debt service on the new trucks, future water wells, solar efficiency, water pipe replacement, replace water line alternate 19 bridge, lift station rehab, new inspection camera, sidewalks, brick street road reconstruction, sponge docks flood abatement, mango street phase two, Cultural and recreation is a sports complex, lighting and field improvements, and then there's lighting library improvements for a total of 8.5 million of the 11.4 CIP. And uh, just for a lot of the CIP is in the governmental funds, I'd like to show the, this is the penny fund, and it's a five-year projection of the penny fund. And I'd say a lot of them are the same ones I just got through mentioning. This is uh, 2022, 23, 24, 25, and year 26. Here's uh, the police and fire vehicles again, the sponge docks, Mango Street, uh, Brick Street Road reconstruction, the sports complex. 4.6 million of expenditures, but that includes 1.3 million that is available for appropriation. This number is currently 1.5 million. That's what was in your backup at the follow at the beginning because uh, fortunately Bob went out and got a grant for the Elfers Trail, 327,000. So that helped to free up some more money. So we have about 1.5 million here in the penny fund, which still leaves after that 428,000 fund balance at the end of 2022. And that's the penny fund. And uh, that's what I have for the CIP. Is basically the last same slides as last week, just going over them again. Right, right. Um, Mr. Harry, I'm not going to go item for item. It's already been done. But um, I, I do support all the projects that we have there for the CIP projects. Um, but we're very fortunate. We got $1.5 million that we can spend for other projects. So, Mr. Lacourse, on the uh, if you look at the page, it's 330. <coughs> Uh, 330 to 332, it has projects that are uh, requested but not been budgeted. So you got $1.5 million to select projects that will be more uh, useful to, uh, to the area, things that we might have, right? Those are unfunded, but also there may be some that's not on here that's important to the commission to be funded. In my, uh, what I would like to see from you is if you, uh, from those three pages there, there are pro projects that have not been funded. If you give us a list of projects that you want to have, since we have $1.5 million uh, on the side for those. Okay. And then uh, we can actually discuss it. I was kind of wanting you to give me, because if you remember last year's budget, we kind of committed a lot of things ahead of time. So last year's budget, we talked about leaving that money as much as we could available so that the commission earlier time in the budget would be able to, to 
give us the input of what's important to them. I mean, we can do it either way. Last time we did it that way, but um, this time we gave the a large amount of money to see which of these projects and which of these things not funded is important to the commission to do. Well, let me just give you an idea what I'm looking for. Okay. That, okay. What I'm looking for is uh, if you have an assessment of the, uh, the city buildings and see where we at, it, with repairs that we need to do, and if you tell us what's going to cost to make sure that we uh, maintain our buildings properly, that's one thing that I want to make sure. And also, uh, one item that has really come to mind is the, uh, the sidewalk on Jasmine, which is very, very dangerous for the kids when they, uh, by the, uh, the sports complex. That's in your, that's in your budget. Okay. So uh, that's the things that I'm, I'm going to be looking for. Look at all the buildings and see the things that we need to repair and maintain those buildings. Vice Mayor. Yeah, um, just for clarification on the Jasmine sidewalk. So from the cemetery to the sports complex, that's going to be in fiscal year 21. Is that correct? Yes, that, that's, the, that's in this budget here. OK, and then there's this from the sports complex to Mellon is not in this year, right? Correct. OK. So that's still part of Jasmine that's missing sidewalks that right. maybe you're referring to? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I mean, that's, I agree, that's a dangerous road. I think someone's going to get hurt severely on that. Um, I do think that's an important part to look at. Uh, I, I do want to just touch base on a few things. I know this is a workshop for all of us, but I do want to just touch base on a few items that are, um, that are being done. Uh, one of them has to do with um, brick and road construction. Uh, I asked what roads are these going to be? And, um, Tom Funchkin said there's two streets in the queue. One is Lemon and Shattuck. Uh, we did have a public comment uh, a couple weeks ago uh, talking about the, uh, how bad the road is on Lemon. So it, that's good that it's going to be addressed this, um, this budget year. That's one of what do you want him to talk about? Because it, it is a costly. Um, do you want him to talk about that road, which was the yeah, next in the queue? Yeah, I just want to bring attention to it. So. Okay. Yeah, good evening. Uh, yeah, that rule has a number of uh, elements into it. There's stormwater, there's water, there's sewer, there's, uh, uh, of course, the sidewalks and the curbing, too, and that. And then the other decision, which, of course, is up the board, it's a historic district. It's actually a paved road. Uh, it's paved over brick over here, and they'll have to make a decision if you want to go brick, so. Kind of explain how it's in the queue because because oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. How, how we yes. start that we already did start from the beginning we, where and yeah, let them know the, how. as you know, we fund this the, the program uh, every other year. A number of years ago, we had a list of a number of streets uh, that came up for engineering services. One was uh, uh, Ring Avenue, uh, and then uh, Cedar Street was the second one. The other streets we had engineered already is Lemon Street and also Shattuck Street. So that's actually why it's back up in the queue. The, the engineering work is done now, we just have to go forward with construction on it. And then we have to remember the next one that would be in the queue, at least for the engineering services that we have to talk about, probably in this budget, is Orange. Orange Street, that, yes. And, and that part of the queue is the engineering portion of it. Right. Like the lemon's already been done and ready to do. Next on this list of funding, when we're talking about this area you're talking about, is Orange Street. Yes. And where we queue that into the budgets coming up. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, a couple other items I just want to bring. Um, again, the water and sewer, I know we have some ability to say yay or nay to them, but I, I just want to bring some attention to it. $250,000 for water line replacements. Um, I, I mean, I, I do feel like there's an opportunity to push that, and but I mean, I, up. Uh, but I appreciate uh, Paul and everything his, his team does, and it's pipe and valve replacement of another $350,000. Um, and then there's other GIS items in here too. So. Uh, when we have residents that come and say that the city's not necessarily doing things for water replacement lines, it, I mean, there is a sense <coughs> amount of budgeted items and year over year to replace these lines. So I do appreciate that. And um, another $200,000 for a main water replacement line. So there's a significant amount of money, like I said, in there for that. Um, I'm happy to see the $650,000 for the solar um, out of the out of the water fund. That's going to help reduce the electricity costs for many, many years to come. Uh, I'm full support of solar anywhere we can from an environmental side and more from a business side as well, too. I think it's beneficial both ways. Um, I'm just going through some notes here real quick. Can someone touch base on the golf course one more time? Uh, Tom, you, I'm sorry to call you back up. Um, 
You had six thousand dollars for the building. You said fascia, soffit, and paint. Now, is the clubhouse is that being addressed this fiscal year, or are we looking at doing anything in the clubhouse at all? Uh, probably Paul could probably speak better than that over here as far as re uh, replacements. Now we've done a bunch of work there this year. Yeah. Okay. I haven't been. I haven't visited yeah. in a while. Yeah. An additional. Uh, yes, we repeat the question, please. So the six K that's in the golf course, right. budgeted for capital. That's more just for fascia, soffit, and paint to update the. Yes. Of course. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> um, one thing that I think it's important for the, the commission to look at is we've all talked about a parking garage in downtown. I know this kind of goes back and forth between CRA and capital. Um, I think it's important that we as a commission look at projects and put a project list of priorities in place uh, because obviously we can't do everything that we want to do in one budget year. Um, and I think it's important to do some type of priority list and I think we need to have a parking garage somewhere in a year coming up and that we need to plan and target for that year. I think we're long overdue for a parking garage. Uh, I think we should have one in downtown. Uh, it should be a combination between CRA funds and CIP, I believe, but I don't know what the, the percentages are. If we could do more CRA than CIP, I think that would probably work best. Um, but I think that's something we need to add. Another item that we should add in the long term, um, it also is the bayou dredging. Uh, I, I don't recall the bayous ever being dredged, um, living one house off the bayou for the past 34 years, and then I just moved off the bayous this past year. Um, so there's a, a significant amount of silt. Is it silt or silt? Silt in the bottom of the bayous. And when you step in the bayou, you sink it down like multiple inches. The runoff has been coming off the roads for the past 100 years or so. Um, and it, there, we would need to put some type of attention to it. And if we could get somehow the seagrasses that grow back in the bayou to help the manatees um, and help the, the life of the bayous, I think that's going to be beneficial. Um, there was a significant amount of tarpon, I remember, that were in the, um, the Mears Crossing, um, uh, I, I don't know what you want to call it, um, the, the tidal pools where the Mears Crossing sits now or the uh, Ikari Apartments. Um, so in between the, with the mangroves and all the different things, there's definitely areas for improvement um, to our ecological area of the bayous. So I think that's something we should add to uh, a long-term um, goal for the CIP. Uh, and then also the landfill. It, I was down in Sarasota this past year and they had a great um, walking area uh, where this could be another nice walking spot for west and south Tarpon Springs. Uh, we could put some, obviously, I don't think we put large oak trees there because of the cap that's on the landfill, but we could still put some um, trees that grow 25, 30 feet tall still. Um, and you could have a walking trail. You could also incorporate other recreation um, elements there, if it's frisbee golf, if it's pickleball courts, um, if it's another tennis court. Um, I don't really know. There's a lot of communities that abut to this also in US-19. Mm -hmm. So it would be a nice um, element, I think, to have uh, to utilize that space. Right now, it's significantly underutilized. There's not a whole lot we could do with it. Um, but I think looking at something that at least opening it up as an open park might be a beneficial um, element. So getting into this year's budget, uh, I do think that we need to put a little more money into the historic marker. There's $5,000 um, that's allocated currently. I, th I would like to see that bumped up to ten. dollars uh, we've talked about that in years past. Um, we had 12 initial sites and we had additional sites that we want to look at. Uh, I think it's important that we bump that up just a little bit higher to $10,000. Um, one thing too that I've heard from residents, it would be nice to have some type of lighting inside the Craig Park trees. So we have a lot of large trees in Craig Park to have them wrapped of some sort or have maybe a, a, it'd be a low voltage um, or they could be lights that hang in the trees as well. Um, so I think that would be something that we would want to look at. And that, that co coincides with beautification also. Uh, Highland Park, I think, is an important thing to look at as well. It's, I feel like it's been neglected for quite some time. We've kind of kicked the can down the road multiple times with this one. Uh, if there's an opportunity to do something with Highland Park, uh, it doesn't have to be super fancy. I mean, if it's an irrigation system and some sod um, to clean it up a little bit, and then also if we could add a few more trees and a uh, dedicated sidewalk, um, to and from the lake would be important. Uh, I did send the memo to the city manager and then also um, Tom and Paul and I believe Ron about solar panels as a whole. And 
actually looking at some type of uh, financing structure for solar panels to evaluate our large building. So it would be city hall, it would be public administration, it would be the library, and maybe one other one that I can't, uh, the um, recreation center. And really seeing what the return on investment would be. So if we finance uh, solar panels, it would take X amount of years to pay them off, let's say seven. You would use that money that you'd be paying towards electric fees to pay for the finance, and after seven years, now you're boosting the city's revenue by, I don't know, $100,000 a year for the next 10 years. Um, so I don't necessarily want to see that in the capital spent. I would rather see that financed, but I would fall in the capital expenditure, I believe, also. Um, just something to look at and for staff to, to get back to us on. Sunset Beach is still an issue. I brought this up the past, I think, three budget seasons. Uh, when you, when people park in the north side of Sunset Beach, obviously we need more parking there because the, the county charges the residents to park at Fred Howard Park. We have continued to see a large demand at Sunset Beach. We have our beach concerts. We have different events that are out there. Uh, it's one of our only boat ramps. A lot of the boaters will park on the north side of Sunset Beach. One of the issues is, is that the sidewalk's close to the road. Now there is, um, the land is starting to erode on the north side a little bit, but it, I think it's important to, to address the safety concern. I, I don't, I'm not aware of someone getting hurt seriously out there, but there's not enough parking for someone to park their boat trailer and, and truck in between the sidewalk and the road. Um, and so what you end up having is you have a one lane road where people are trying to come in and out of Sunset Beach. And then you have pedestrians that are also trying to walk up and down the road when there's no parking on the sidewalks, but then sometimes the trucks end up in the sidewalks. So you have a couple different issues there. You've got trucks on the sidewalks and you also have trucks blocking the road that create a one-way area. So I, there's definitely an area for improvement um, along that area. Uh, but when we get into like recreation, I, I do think it's important to address the three fields that we have. Um, Sisler Field, where the, the um, oh, and I'm sorry, I'm going to go back to Sunset Beach real quick. The beach renourishment, I think the $10,000 is an important thing to have in there as well, um, just because it, you don't want to be at the beach where it's just rocky and not sandy, so that's a, I think that's well money, or money spent well in that case. Uh, but all, so going from Sistler Field to Riverside Field, the soccer field and Riverside tennis courts, all three of those um, fields are long overdue to have their fences replaced. There's, many of them are rusted. Um, they're breaking where the, the bars are on top. Um, the fence itself is severely rusted as well. Um, as a kid, I mean, I, I will jump over those fences even if the gate's open. It's just one thing that kids do. So I do see that it being a safety issue. Um, and I think it's important that we replace that. I, I do believe, Commissioner Donovan, you provided these, this backup, right, with um, about Sisler Field mm -hmm. um, with some pictures. So I think that is an important thing to look at. Uh, Did you say Sisler, Riverside? And, Blair, uh, and you have it back here in your backup. Riverside Soccer Field and Riverside Tennis Courts. Okay. Those are the ones I've seen okay. where they're really bad. I know there's something else besides Riverside, so you mean the two, two at Riverside. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, there's a ton of stuff in here um, that would be nice, but there's one of the discussions that we had too is, is looking at some signs for like City Hall, um, some of the beaches. I know we have some budgeted for this year, uh, but we do have the signs that are starting to deteriorate, um, the wooden signs, and I'm not sure when they're initially installed, they're the gray. Um, pole signs that are just uh, the old pilings. Um, they, they, they've lasted a long time, but I do think it's important to, to put a little bit towards that um, just so we could um, enhance that and have the same type of sign at all of our, our city parks and city uh, buildings because I believe there's about 19 different kinds right now. And I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm looking through a couple different things right now to make sure I got everything. And just a quick comment on the shades um, with the, the sports fields. I think they're great. Um, if we do any more of those, we want to make sure the shade actually extends further. Um, 
in front and behind and to the side of the uh, stands. So when the sun's at a different um, range, that it, there's still shade instead of just overhead. Um, but I do, I do support some additional shade structures if there's a need for that. Um, let me see. And I, I did have a question about um, the grant out for a Discovery Park mark. Uh, we, I know we applied for it, but we didn't get it. Is that a grant that is an annual grant, or is that a grant that is just it was available so we applied for it? Bob, you want to talk about the grant? <laughs> huh? Is that yours, or is that Paul's? I just came to say I don't know anything about that one, Mark. <laughs> You know anything about Discovery Park grant? We're talking about the field. Oh, that'd be the Tom. sport field. Okay. Okay. The lights. The sport. The, the, field. the field lighting. Yeah, uh, we've expansion. we've got it in the budget to do now. Um, we've tried for the grant. We didn't do it, but we feel we need to go forward with it because um, I don't think we're sure when another grant opportunity. But we do have it funded in this budget right now for that. You saw the the, the sports complex. The the, the, yeah, the field. field. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Is that correct, Tom? Yes. yes. We haven't got, uh, as far as the grant goes, we still have an outside chance yet, more like we don't get it, but it is but in the budget there for. I know budget. that. I yeah. see that. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you confirming that. But is this a, is this a recurring grant that we applied for? Is, is it, he's is asking, it, is it a recurring it through, grant? Or? Uh, not recurring, yeah. Okay, okay, so it's like a one-time grant. One so it wasn't shot, like yes. we could apply for it next year and there's a chance. So it's yes. like a. There's okay. a chance, yes. <laughs> got it. Okay, I think I think that's everything I touched on right now. I, I'm I'm good to go. So thank you. Okay. Commissioner Terrapin. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm gonna start with the wish list stuff because that's the fun stuff. <laughs> so um, we did talk last year about Orange Street from Alternate 19 to Ring Avenue. So that would be something that would be a priority for me in terms of a uh, uh, restoration or beautification or realignment, whatever we want to call it from on Orange from Alt 19 to Ring Avenue. I think with the, the new townhouse project there and with the amount of people that park on Ring in between the trail and, I mean, I'm sorry, on Orange in between the trail and Ring, I think it's important to go all the way to Ring on Orange. Um, the dock at Sunset Beach, I think, is a priority and is something that uh, we talked about earlier in the year. Um, for me, the sponge docks entryway is still a major priority. Um, repaving of lemon to banana, or I'm sorry, repaving of lemon from banana to the bayou. Tom, you spoke about that a little bit. That's something that's already been engineered and we just need to fund or what? Okay. So that, that would be a wish list for me. And then uh, the vice mayor brought up the uh, fence at Riverside Field. I think that that's a really good idea and something that, you know, is easy enough to more or less write the check for. Um, my preference would for it to be like black powder coated um, to match some of the other sports fields that we're doing. I think the powder coated looks nice and it, and it goes a long way. Um, to touch on some of my questions, and I don't, I don't mean to be lengthy, um, but uh, Ron, if you could provide a little bit of information on the $2 million of debt service on page uh, 320. Is that for the water treatment facility still? Page 320. Correct, in the executive sum summary. Yeah, that's your water plant bond. Yeah, it's that's, the, right. that's the annual amount we pay for the principal and interest. And what's the life of that? Uh, we've got another, uh, I think it's, let's see, 26 years. 2042 okay. is a year. <laughs> so we're, we can get used to seeing that number then, huh? <laughs> um, and then uh, I had a question regarding the future raw water wells. Uh, maybe that's a Mr. Smith question. Um, Paul. I see that, you know, obviously it says future raw water wells, right? So, and then I see where there's no budgetary uh, expense for 23 and 24. I'm assuming that you're planning on spending that 850 over the course of the next three years? Okay. Um, so, do we have any idea how much of that we're going to spend in 2022? Yes, this is a big project for us, and I actually took the additional step of having our project manager with us tonight, Earl Nash. I'd, I'd like to introduce him for just a minute, sure. if I may. 
uh, while he's coming up, I'd just like to brag on him and the staff a little bit. He's our water division manager, and he does many project managements, including a solar project, and um, this is another big project he's working on. So, um, Earl, if you want to answer the question about what the current status of the project is and what the spending is expected. Okay, thank you. Welcome, Earl. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate being able to speak. Um, this project, and I know your question was what do we plan for the 2022, if I could back up just a minute and just give a brief overview of the project as a whole just to kind of tell you more about what it's about. The Water Division has used funding for that to do some evaluations to determine the, the need for additional raw water and uh, how best we would go about getting the raw water. Um, our consulting engineers, um, our consulting engineering contract did those evaluations and their finding was that the best way to do that was to bring a raw water blending pipeline to connect two existing wells from south of the Anclote River and blend them in with the existing brackish water well field and also in directly into the plant to um, provide um, some increased ability in, in certain areas. So based on their recommendations, the funds from WS2002, this project, will be used to design and construct the pipeline to expand the well field geographically to give us more space to put new wells and also to provide that blending to um, increase in fish efficiency and also reduce electrical cost. And so the funding from this year's budget has been used um, and will be now um, used for the design part of that and the construction would be the 2022 money. So the 850 is gonna be put toward the construction of the pipeline. For the new wells as well as the existing wells? So the new, so throughout the evaluation, you know, we started looking at it as we might just be drilling some new wells and adding them into the existing brackish uh, well field that we have along that pipeline. Um, and it evolved into the project that it is now. And so with this phase of it, we'll be connecting existing wells, um, and that gives us the ability to have a known water quality from those wells that we have here south of the river that um, have been in service a very long time and have maintained quality over those years. And we'll be able to right away provide um, some abilities to, number one, be able to rest wells appropriately. Um, we have... Um, the ability to meet peak demands, but we are very limited in our ability to rest wells like they need to be. Um, that's based on their proximity close to each other and also just limited number of wells. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we're able to meet peak demand, but they are close to each other geographically. Um, another thing that it provides you the ability to do is um, you know, to have a sustainable water supply, you really need to have a water quality that doesn't vary significantly with withdrawal rate. Um, ours does vary with withdrawal rate, and this would assist in that, to bring some wells into the well field that, that don't have that variability and can give you the ability to um, um, kind of blend, for use of that word, to give us a more stable water quality. And third, um, just in their proximity to each other, it gives you the ability to, um, to have some wells that don't, will not have interference by them being too close to those. It'll expand it geographically. We'll be able to add more wells. So to answer your question, in future, a multi-funding, multi-year CIP funding, I believe those years are, we have it out in 2025, 29, 30, and 31. We <coughs> plan to install three new wells along that pipeline um, south of the river. And then Earl, are we selling water at this point to uh, Pasco County? No. No. And then what about Pinellas County? No. Okay, so we're not selling any water yet? No. Okay. And then uh, the generator upgrades for 200,000, I wanna say that, oh, I'm sorry, that's the additional CIP project costs. What, what are some of those additional projects? That's in 2021, the 200,000? Uh, no, I see it in 2022. It's right under oh, the- Oh, additional, I'm sorry. I was thinking the generator. 
Okay, so that one is our like our near-term minor capital improvement item. So those would be things that you are not able to plan for long-term. So if you have a pump go out, we keep spares of different types of items. If we have one of those things go out that has a long lead time, some of our pumps may take six months to get mm -hmm. if they go out. So it's very important to keep spares. So in that event, we would need to use that, use those funds to purchase a replacement for that. That's typically the kind of thing we'd spend it on. Gotcha. And then, uh, Paul, I think we had talked about the solar energy efficiency improvements for the 650. Um, and were we able to uh, expand that program enough to sell energy to Duke? Well, if I need a little help, Earl's here because he's managing it. But it is set up to be a bi-directional meter, meaning if there are times where we produce more than we use, mm -hmm. then uh, it would go back into the grid and we'd get credit for it. But I can tell you at this point, we've got a ways to go with solar panels before we get to that point. Mm -hmm. When we're making that energy during the day, when the sun's out, we're also using a lot of energy in our treatment process. So um, we are, but it has the same effect. I mean, it's coming right off the electric bill. So uh, it is saving us money. And you're proposing for those uh, solar panels to be on site, correct? That's correct, yeah. And we, only on site at this point? Yes, we're doing a, a master plan here, Earl's working on, which isn't just, you know, this, this particular year, but how are we gonna maximize this for the, for the whole facility? We really want it to be a demonstration project where people come and say, wow, look at how they're using solar energy to make water. You know. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, just to touch on the generators real quick, I remember, I want to say in last year's budget, we talked about uh, generators, and I think we bought some, and I, now I see that you're going with permanent generators. Do you have any idea what we're going to do with the ones that we bought last year? Oh, we're still going to use them. Um, these guys have some great ideas. So we installed or three permanent generators um, right at the wells that come on automatically, but they've also found a way to have uh, the circuitry at the well so they can hook up a portable generator and it'll automatically kick that on on other wells with the same effect. So it's a way of using our portables with the same benefit of it automatically coming on. So if there's an emergency coming up, we can mobilize those generators, hook them into this circuitry I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and it'll, it'll work on its own without someone having to run out there and get it all started up. Gotcha. And then the one of the uh, or two last things I have, or actually one, the 950 for the water line uh, replacement on the old 19 bridge, is that water flowing from north to the south or south to the north? I'm going to ask Ray to come come up. He he gets credit for this one. He he was paying attention and said, you know, Paul, that pipe's in pretty bad shape. We need to make some plans pretty quick to sure. get that replaced. And um, so I credit him. That's one of the big things he does for us is keeps an eye out well ahead before Thank something's you. an emergency. Good afternoon. Raymond Page, you told you superintendent. Yes, it is coming from the north heading to the south. Gotcha. Ray, was there any money available from the county or any grant money or anything for that? Not really on that. There's not, but as you guys know, we're looking at this uh, uh, federal infrastructure money to really help offset some of these costs to really get some of our infrastructure moved forward. Gotcha. Uh, appreciate all y'all's comments. Y'all are very sharp men, and I appreciate you, uh, your service to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then I have maybe one more for you, uh, Paul. The station rehab construction for a million one um, in the water sewer fund. I guess that's for the sewer lift station. Is that something that this commission's talked about before or no? Well, I think it was in last year's budget for design, but we're getting to that point where we're getting into construction and it's behind the Publix over there. It's the one by the new uh, medical clinic, Shepherd Center area there. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a major lift station. We have a handful of those around the city. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is about time. I think it was built in the 60s and we've been keeping it going, but it's time for a total rebuild, so. So last year we designed it. And this year we're going to build it. That's right. And you expect it to be on, on track? That's our hope, yes. Gotcha. Great. Thank you all again. Um, again, I, I've already mentioned my uh, wish list for the million five that we have left over. Uh, Mark, did we spend any money last year on, the, on Orange Street in terms of any engineering of that or no? No, we still got what we have to budget is the engineering. Okay. So, that, so what we would potentially, if there's consensus among the commission, is utilize some money for the engineering uh, on that and then you heard all my other things and I guess at a certain point in one of our last meetings maybe the public meeting or something you'll get you'll grab a consensus on how the Commission would like to uh, delegate that million and a half mm -hmm. yes you got you got everything else I said right
Thank you. Wasn't that budgeted last year, though, the engineering cost? I think we talked about it. I don't know. I, it's hard for me to I draw it was memory. budgeted for Ron, last year, for school year 21, uh, for engineering for the, the road. Because Bob said how I excited he was to have a whole year to... I think we maybe left a placeholder for of some money, maybe? Are you talking about Orange Street? Or, Orange Street from Alt-19 to Ring Avenue. Did we do anything with that last year? No, we've got it in for... Uh, I'm sorry, yes, we did. We're, we're trying to bud find the money for next year for the Orange Street construction. So we have money budgeted from last year for the engineering? For this current year. For 21? Yes. Okay. And how much is that? Oh, I, I'm trying to remember if it was 100, 150,000. So my sense is, is that's not going to be enough, or maybe it will, or I guess that's just the engineering of it. Okay. Construction, I'm sorry. Yeah, the construction is next, right? Right. That's where well, we're looking for the money for the construction. And you would be looking for that in this this year's budget. Correct. We don't. We've got the money for Lemon Street, but we don't. We're looking for the money for the Orange Street. And the money for Lemon Street is a repaving. That's for the brick and brick roads re reconstruction. To go back to brick on Lemon Street. Yeah. No. No, Tom. Come up and. There's options. It, it, I don't think we're going to have enough money to go back to it. So that's one of the things when we go out, we may, when we bring back to you to go out for bid, we may do one, an option one way, an option another way, and look at the cost to see what the difference is. Is that, that right, Tom, about that, the strategy? That is, that is correct. It's a, it's a brick street that was paved over one time. So, yes, that'll be the decision. What you want to go back to brick or pave? Do we have uh, cost estimates if we were to go back to brick? Uh, the last one I had was a couple of years old, about 300000 additional. Uh, in addition to? Uh, uh, over, over the cost of asphalt. And do you know what the cost of asphalt is? Uh, I don't have the right number right in okay. front of me, but I can get it for you. All right. <clears throat> but that's what we'd have to look at and make a decision on, uh, on the cost of those two. I don't want to take any more time because I know uh, everybody else would like a chance to speak, and 9 o'clock is rapidly approaching. Commissioner Donovan. Uh, yeah, real quick, uh, just two questions. Just give me some one-liner answers here. Uh, Vice Mayor Carr, your Sunset Beach suggestion was to allow for more boat parking or extend it or? It's to move the sidewalk to the north so it allows for better parking that doesn't go over the sidewalk and block the road. So okay, and then Commissioner Terrapani, um, I know the orange to ring, but uh, the lemon to bayou, what, where was that? So lemon from banana to the bayou. Is, okay. Is in pretty rough condition. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll be super brief. Um, hopefully, you guys all got the budget background uh, that I put for the Sisler compact uh, complex fencing. Um, right now, uh, the background on it is you know it's on page three thirty one. It's unbudgeted. It's an item requesting fifty thousand dollars to replace the fencing at Sisler Field. Uh, just to touch on the summary overall, in 2019, the baseball fields were redone, and the fencing is great. I mean, people say move the Rays to Tampa, move the Rays to Canada, they should come right here because the Sisler fencing is that good. Um, the fields look great. The fencing looks great. I don't know whether it's black powder coat, if it's like vinyl coated or galvanized. I don't know what it is, but that fencing needs to be replicated at Sisler Field because I went out there the other day. You could have told me that the fences were put in yesterday. I would have believed you. I mean, there's no rust on them at all. Um, the softball field, which, as we all know, is the Sisler field, we spend so much time and money making this a, a monument. We, we do the, the plaques there. We always say, hey, it's historically significant. We even added the little sign at the entrance that says, hey, this is important to us. This is a, a historic um, piece of art in Tarpon. Uh, we just did the murals out in front of it, too. So really, aside from the fact that it's kind of like putting our money where our mouth is because we want to claim it as this awesome historical, you know, significant field, and then, you know, we're going to let the, the fencing go really bad. But also the safety aspect of it, I put some pictures in the back up. You can scroll through them or flip through them. You're going to see sections held up with plastic zip ties. Uh, a bunch of the different joints are completely rusted, rotted through. Um, it just, it, it really needs help. And then Another aspect of it is fairness. I know it was never intended this way, but 2019, we replace both the baseball fields, and then softball was sitting there waiting patiently. Um, so it's it's just it, it's time to do it. Um, and you'll look back if you see in the backup too. I also got a letter from uh, the vice president of Little League Baseball and Softball. Um, he can give you a little bit more background on it if you're kind of on the fence about it. 
The only other thing I, I wanted to touch on um, was also, I think it's JC Field, which is the T-ball field. It's similar state to Sisler, not quite as bad. Um, but just in addition to that 50,000 for Sisler, I also think it might be wise to just put a placeholder in there for 25 or 30,000 for the T-ball field. And the big price decline from that is just given the fact that the field is, you know, Sisler's probably twice the size of the T-ball field in terms of fencing. So that's really my, my, my big ask is just that we, we really need to address the Sisler fencing at Sisler Field and then hopefully the T-ball field as well. So again, the Sisler field is 50,000, the T-ball field 25,000, 30,000. Um, I think either of those could, could at least get the job done. But that's all I got, Mayor. Commissioner Tikuris. Thank you, Mayor. Um, there's, um, I, I, Ron, you might have to help me. I, I look for the Roosevelt Seawall. Is that in this budget, or is that one of those? Uh, I don't even, <coughs> I don't see it in the wish list either. The Roosevelt uh, Boulevard Seawall. I'm not familiar with that one, to tell you the it, truth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? I, I know you know what I'm talking about, Steve Mitchell. Of course, we've talked about um, it. Yes, uh, but I'm. It's one of the really pretty orange fence right now, right? Yeah. It, yeah, it, so that Roosevelt. It's the one about the fall down. That Roosevelt Seawall, that's the one we're about to look at and get the engineering work done on it. So I don't have any monies identified right now for that one in this year. Okay. And I was thinking we'd probably get to it in this fiscal, but. Doesn't, well, I More think we need to. I mean, we can't live yeah. with that thing like that. No, I agree. Uh, it's it's okay. our next they're, priority. They're, right, and the reason why is there's heavy trucks backing up against that wall, and, and I, you know, fuel trucks, uh, Cox Seafood's got their trucks, there's semis coming in and out, and, um, and, it, it, and it's as bad as Hope Street, but we're in the process of taking, we've issued the, the pr contract on Hope Street, so. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I like for that, that's repair. That needs to be, I think, fixed. Um, the sunshine, the sunshades over the equipment at Sunset Beach, I think that's on our wish list. I'd really like to get something for the kids out there at Sunset Beach uh, um, so they don't burn their back ends. Um, the shelter that was torn down because it was dangerous, I think we need to put that back up. Um, it's really sad. You go out there. There's morning shade, but then uh, from the east, but then the west, that whole spot is completely open to the sun again. And people put their lawn chairs there and their and their coolers, thinking that they're mimicking being in a in a picnic shelter. So that would be good to get that back done. Um, I I I think uh, Vice Mayor Carr brought up the golf course. I'd like to see that finished off or whatever we're going to do with that um, as far as repair. The Arcadis, um, would that be CIP money? The Arcadis, uh, 25,000 for the uh, uh, planning grant to, to pursue a planning grant, would that be CIP money? It'd be. Um, That's something we've talked about. We're all for it, but I don't see it anywhere in here. Can you use salaries in CIP though? It, hmm? The Arcadis, there, there was two things. One, there's a CDBG grant for sea level rise that um, Dr. Robinson had talked to Mr. Hottie from Pinellas County, the, the sustainability coordinator there, and, um, and the idea was to use that money for the Arcadis $25,000 for the match for the planning grant, which would be $300,000, and that would go to competing for the large five to six million dollar infrastructure grant for fixing the flooding around Whitcomb Bayou or whatever else we, we decided to pursue. It's I think that we're large coming FEMA back, grant. I think we're coming back to the board on that in August. Okay. I, I don't think we voted on that at all. No, we were all in agreement is what I'm getting yeah. at, but I didn't see any money in here for well, this Well, that's year. because we didn't agree to it. I mean, we didn't vote on that. We didn't make a decision on it. Mm. No, I, I know we didn't make a decision, but what I'm saying is we don't see it in the CIP proposed, nor do I see it on the wish list of the CIP. There's a wish list in here of things that were proposed but are not budgeted. Yes, but it was never agreed that we're going to go do that route, didn't we? We did not. In my opinion, we haven't decided on that at all. Okay. May, when we so bring how are you going to all... budget something that we haven't decided? Yes, well, none of the stuff that in our wish list we've discussed. I mean, it's, it's things that need to be fixed and repaired. I mean... Yes, let's schedule it and talk about it the way the city manager is describing. That's fine with me. 
All I'm saying is that I don't see it anywhere, and we've discussed it, and that the sea level rise and the flooding around the bayous has got to be dealt with. Commissioner Vatikiotis, if I can make a comment. Um, in the years past, we, we've dedicated money for Whitcomb Bayou just in general, and I think there's probably some left over for this year. It might be just the recommendation is we look at putting money towards something, something. for Whitcomb Bayou. That's fine. And that might be the approach that whatever that could be, if it's additional study that needs to be done or something along those lines. Right. Um, That's fine. We can talk about it at a later date is what I'm getting at. That's fine. Uh, something has to be done. Um, the, um, and, and a couple of these things, the super link, I'll talk to Ms. Litton uh, on the side about that. The sponge docks cameras phase two, Wi-Fi caught my attention. Um, the, the sponge docks merchants would like the, uh, the bathrooms expanded on Hope Street and I can talk to the city manager about that and figure out what we can do maybe later, not necessarily this year. What was year. that that they wanted with the bathrooms? The bathrooms uh, on Hope Street, uh, the public bathrooms, of course. They that were talking expanded. about expanded. Want, want more? Yes. Uh -huh. Or expanded. Make them larger. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, they're fine. They just want them larger. Um, and the. Um, the two things that I talked about to the city manager, um, we're, we're owed, we owe the residents a town hall meeting on the um, former Hoffman Sunbay properties as far as what we're gonna do. But I, uh, I, as far as beautification, that's a real key focal point on the town and I would like to see something, whether it's even just uh, sodding and, and irrigation and cleaning that field, that, that corner up um, would be nice and then also, um, the, our, the uh, Denami developers have uh, rescinded their uh, contract with the uh, uh, 144 East Tarpon Avenue Forbes property. I, I don't know when we're gonna ever get that thing taken care of as far as built or anything like that, but I really would like to see that fixed as far as beautification goes, take the fences down, beautify it, do something paint the walls just so we can we can have something there other than it looking like um, you know some back alley somewhere um, that 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 doesn't match the rest of the town the um, strategic plan implementation I would that be CIP money uh, city manager of course I don't believe so Ron would it this the strategic plan implementation no you talk about the 144,000 yeah, we've got that. Split. Well, that's we, for the, but it doesn't include the phase three, which is implementation. We, we don't have anything to budget for that. Would that be general fund money or CIP money? Uh, it depends on, are you talking about capital projects? It, it could be. Okay, it yeah, would, you're could probably looking at the penny fund then. Okay, we, we probably need to talk about that. Right now, that is scheduled to be ready uh, next summer, and so we would need a full dose of money, but just something to get the USF helping us implement the plan so we don't uh, lose time on that. Um, Vice Mayor Carr, the, the, I, the um, Spring Bayou and that, that throat between Spring Bayou and Whitcomb, um, I agree with you on that. And, and um, we've talked about a, a Manatee Educational Center, at least I have with the city manager, and a Manatee Educational Center utilizing existing buildings there at Craig Park. But the first step in getting that dredged really needs to be a benthic survey, which basically characterizes the bayou. So what, whatever we do, we don't mess it up, I guess is what I'm getting at. We need to be careful. It's a real, but the manatees are there. I'd hate to do something that they don't show up anymore. And certainly they've got that choice. Um, so I, I agree with you on that, but we need to kind of get some help on this from an environmentalist to kind of guide us. And then also, um, the city manager, of course, the, I, I know this is a charter thing that we are gonna talk about last January, the bathymetric surveys of the recreational bayous. Did you make any progress on that or? Yeah, Bob, you wanna talk about that? Yeah, Commissioner, those are underway right now. Those they're, surveys. They're word of they are underway right now. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, that's a, the charter requirement Understood. that we start something this yep. year on that, okay. I think that's it. I, um, those are mostly repairs. I, th I think the other ideas that the commission has are wonderful ideas and I'd like to see them all done. Um, I think we need to, as I've always said, prioritize them so we can't get everything done at the same time. Thank you. 
thank you. I have a whole list of things that I was going to uh, um, to bring up, uh, but most of them have been uh, already covered. But there are th some things that I want to talk about. Uh, Mr. Liquor, as we talked about in, in the past, that uh, we need to beautify uh, the streets coming to uh, to the city hall. They look terrible. The uh, the Pine Street from uh, North Pinellas to here to the city hall looks terrible. It needs to be beautified. Um, we got visitors that are coming to uh, to the city hall and also uh, during the uh, 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 different different events that we have here in this building, and uh, we need to beautify that. I know uh, also the Ring Avenue. We have uh, a nice project that Mr. Kokolaki is almost finished with that. I think it's now it's time to uh, to beautify and put some uh, landscaping on the whole street. Both of those streets are leading to the city hall, so we need to make that to look nice. Um, Mr. Smith, I have uh, a question to ask you. Uh, just about every year we're talking about uh, lift stations that they need to be repaired. Um, I don't know, some of those have probably been there for many, many years. Do you have any action plan that we know uh, what maintenance they need to be done on that? And if you do, can you share that with us? That way we can actually put dollars next to those projects? Yes, we do. Uh, we have an annual plan where we go around to all 60 lift stations or so, and that's in our operating budget. You'll see the various components, the wet well, the dry well, the pump rebuilds, the control panel. So this is an ongoing maintenance. Occasionally we have a major lift station project. One is in this year's budget for the Lyme and Huey that we just mentioned, but we also got our Ferris lift station coming up as a next major one a few years out. It shows up in our capital, our 10-year plan. So that's a thumbnail of uh, what we're doing with our lift stations. Yeah, because those projects are very expensive, so we need to actually plan about those so we don't wait to the last minute and say, hey, we need $2 million, where are we going to find it? Yes, Mayor, yeah. that's why we do a 10-year plan. All right. Um, Can I ask a question real quick? Go ahead. Paul, where's the lift station on our Ferris? Is it actually on Cedar? On Athens, says my expert from the back. On Athens? It's right off. Uh, it's on our Ferris, right off of Dodecanes, right behind the buildings there. It's a little gray square. It doesn't really look like anything. It's right next to the dumpster for that building. Huh. It's a very oh, small yeah, footprint. Oh yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. It's a very small yeah, footprint. Yeah, yeah. yeah you Thanks, can't Mark. see that. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. But that is lift station number one in the city. That was the first lift station ever constructed. Yeah. Is that right? Yep. So it'll be, be scheduled for re replacement. Get it a plaque. Thank you. You need a, <laughs> you need a historic <laughs> marker there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, I, I got some other things that I would like to, uh, to discuss. Um, we have budgeted $400,000 for police vehicles. Um, Chief Young, would you please tell us how, how often do you replace those vehicles and if those vehicles you're going to get to make sure they're fully equipped? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the vehicles are fully equipped. Uh, we try to get about 10 years out of the vehicles. Yeah. Uh, they're on a rotation, and every year, as you see, we try to bring in six new vehicles and rotate those out. So that, uh, in 2022, we're looking at five vehicles that are 2012s and one that's a 2014 that, due to the cost of maintenance on it, we're going to try to get that one off our uh, payroll. Okay. So uh, you, how many vehicles do you think you're going to get with 400000 uh, six. Six vehicles, yes. Yeah, four uh, patrol vehicles. Then we're going to do two hybrids. Uh, one of them will go to administration, Major Ruggiero, and the other one to our detective division. We're going to try to see how those will work uh, in the police uh, field and then broadcast out further on, uh, looking at hybrids uh, probably the following fiscal year. Any grants available for that? Any grants available, sir, uh, for hybrids? I didn't look, have not looked into it, but we can certainly uh, take a look at that. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I think it was um, um, Commissioner Terrapin who asked the question about future water wells, and we budgeted $850,000. Is that including the pipe that, that connects all those wells with the, uh, with the main uh, network? The 850 will go directly to the construction of the blending pipeline that will connect two existing wells this side of the river with the brackish water 
well field. Okay. And it'll tie into the raw water main up there that connects all those wells together. And, and I think I asked Mr. Smith a question once before. Uh, do we need to have a pump to push the water from those wells to, uh, uh, to the plant? They'll each have their own pump, and so that's something that they do in the evaluation is to determine to make sure that the, the existing pumps that are here in these wells now can do that, and they, the wells that we already have, the pumps existing in those wells can, can make that happen. So you're going to use the pump that is actually pulling yes, that sir. will push the water towards the, the, the plant? Yes, sir. The, the pumps that are right now in the wells will be adequate to push them to all the way to the plant. If that's not enough pressure, you're going to have to put a, a booster in there to, uh, uh, to pressurize the water and send it to the plant? How's that going to work? You would just increase the capacity of the pump that you have in whatever given well it is that you're having an issue with. But those have been already looked at and evaluated, and they're adequate to supply the water up to the plant. Yeah, thank you. Thank yes, you very much. Mr. Mr. Smith, oh, Can yes, go ahead. Question? Of course. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, this is a little bit of a pet thing I'm watching, as Mr. Smith knows. So the two wells we're talking about at, are at the south distant near Klosterman. Is that correct? It's Tarpon on Tarpon Avenue near the sports complex and Gross Avenue well. Gross Good. Avenue well. Okay. And we'll do a directional bore under the Anclo River? Yes. Okay. And do we still have potable wells that would, we'll leave intact for an emergency water supply as far as would yeah, you like to answer yeah that? sure thanks it, it gets into a policy thing so I, I apologize for that it's a little more higher level than you know just getting the water from one spot Paul knows what I'm talking about yes and I remember your question about that and um, one of the first things is we've set up a system where we've got check valves on the county's system they will automatically open if we ever have a pressure drop so um, we already have a redundancy with water supply with the county, which I think is excellent, because within that, they have their own redundancies of different um, sources of power, if power goes out. <coughs> we also have redundancies at our RO plant for power and at our wells. So we believe we've adequately addressed that. I know your idea, which I understand, is to use our local freshwater wells as a, another layer of emergency. I just don't think the capacity of those wells by themselves would meet that purpose that you need yeah. like these other options yeah, do. No, not, not for a um, normal time, but in case of a Cat 5 hurricane that wipes everything out just as a source of potable water. It's just in our comp plan we're required to maintain a, an emergency water supply. And, and I understand the rest. I don't want to, Paul, we could talk about this more. I just wanted to get an idea of where these other wells were. So thank you. Oh, Mr. Smith, if you stay there for a minute. Um, it was covered by uh, Vice Mayor Carr that um, the water pipe replacement that we uh, budgeted $350,000. And this is an ongoing project that we would be working on that for many, many years, trying to replace all the pipes. We've got a very, very good water coming out of the, uh, the water plant, but we want to make sure the water is good quality, goes to the residents. So we keep changing those pipes. And I don't know how many years we'll be doing that. It's probably more than seven, eight years now. Uh, how are we doing with these projects? Are we getting close to finished? Well, Mayor, it's one of those ongoing sort of things. There's so much work to be done that I really believe that once we finish one thing, uh, by the time we get through it all, it's just a continual cycle. Uh, right now, our priority are things like the smaller diameter galvanized metal pipes that they have a life. And once that life gets exceeded, they start rusting on the inside and adding color to the water. So these are things we want to replace with plastic pipe to um, bypass that whole problem. We're working in the River Village community right now, replacing that very type of issue. Mm -hmm. We've got a plan about, uh, I would say, that'll last us five to seven years at this point. We have to be flexible with that plan on a priority basis because other things come into play that we can't predict. But um, our goal is in-house, we do this work. We look at our repair incidents, we look at the materials, we have a great help with IT and our GIS system. We can track all the types of pipe we have around the city and use all this information to make an in-house plan. Yeah, uh, if you please stay there, I wanna ask you another question. Another good project that uh, we started many years ago was to replace the, uh, the water meters with the radio wave 
meters. How are we doing with this project? I think we're doing very well. We've reduced our funding a little bit each year on that, just trying to keep our rates, you know, in a manageable level. But we're doing that work in-house as well, and I think that's at great savings. The trade-off with that is it does take time. I think we've made great progress on it. We'll continue to make progress. But um, I think we're already seeing results in terms of our meter reading, the ability of the customer to diagnose water leaks much better. Yes. So I think the program's going well. Yeah, they work very well. I just want to be good when we finish with that. So everybody has that, uh, uh, the meter that it can be actually uh, identified water leaks and stuff. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, if we go down to the transportation, um, one of the items on transportation is the uh, sponge docks floody, uh, flood amendment, the $1.7 million that we got from uh, a grant from the state. Uh, Mr. Robinson, would you please? <clears throat> Yes, sir. If you tell us when we begin with the process uh, for this import, import project and what are we going to achieve, what steps we're going to take mm -hmm. to make sure that everybody is involved, the, uh, the business owners, the uh, property owners, and all the residents of Interpol Springs, because it's a huge project. And sure. It's going to affect so many people. It definitely is. Um, but with the news of being awarded the money, um, I've initiated the uh, scoping work with our engineer because we still have to do the design work that has to start this year um, and uh, definitely will involve a lot of public input. You're right about that. We're going to need to do that uh, and that's going to be an important part of this project. Um, but as we stand right now, parallel path, I'm working on the state paperwork for the, for the grant. Uh, so I want to get all that lined up so once we get the design done, we'll be ready to go right into construction, put it, put it out for bid and um, get the project done as fast as we can. Okay. I'm looking forward to that one. You? Yes. We've been working a long time trying to get the funding for this project. Um, thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Funch. The, uh, the sports complex lying in the field improvements, we budgeted $400,000. We have many, many kids, many children using these facilities. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be surprised how many kids that are actually playing soccer every afternoon there. I love soccer. Yep. And uh, I go there a lot and, and watching those kids play. It's amazing to see. Uh, sometimes you get 500 kids at the same time playing, practicing, using a small portion of the field. Can you tell us what you plan to do with these complex? Uh, yes, the field we're looking to, uh, we're looking to take uh, uh, the, will be the southeast field, which it doesn't have any lights as you come in through the gate. Is that it's the half field? It's a second field on the right-hand side. The one that's a half a field? Yeah, we right call it the half, half field. field. <laughs> the half a field. Yeah? yeah? That's what we call it. They call it a half a field. Okay. It, it, it's not regulation size. Yes. Uh, so we're looking to expand that and also okay. add lights on it. And there'll be, all, there'll be some, there'll be quite a bit of earthwork done on there. And we're going to do all that in-house. Of course, most of the money that we're looking for, uh, we'll spend probably mostly on the lighting. But a lot of the, a lot of the labor will all be done in-house, including the irrigation. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and, and I'm asking this question because many, many parents wanted to know when we're going to make those improvements. Uh, shortly, once you give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> money talks, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Tom will be out there. Huh? He'll be out there actually digging it. Oh, I probably will be, yeah, I know, <laughs> exactly. Well, unless anybody has any other comments on the CAP. I've got actually a couple of my, I think I missed on mine. Uh, Mayor, if you, you don't mind. Um, so there's a, the Tarpon, Ave, Tarpon Avenue and Spring Boulevard intersection and Spring Boulevard, Orange Street, and I can't remember what's that, what's that other, Grand, I think it is. Those three intersections um, are, are a mess. Um, they've been a mess for many years from pedestrian safety to traffic flow. Uh, I know we talked about looking and working with the county of some sort if there's an improvement for a roundabout at Orange and Spring Boulevard and Grand. Um, it's a county road, but I think if we show some type of partnership to improve the pedestrian safety in this area, uh, one of the neighbors that live in the corner there, they've complained about people running stop signs and almost getting hit multiple times on that road. Um, I do think it's important that we try to show some initiative if we could put some dollars towards it, or at least earmark it in a future years. 
uh, and then as well as the Tarpon Avenue intersection. Um, and then there's also um, the lot next to Jimmy's Pizza uh, that the city purchased for a potential fire station or maybe something else in the future. Um, I would ask that the city manager look at at least doing something on that piece of property. It's just, I mean, it's on the west side of town and it looks like a, an abandoned piece of property. Uh, if it's a dog park, something that's passive, if it's just grass and we mow it, um, something just to make it a little bit more attractive to the neighbors. Um, but I do think a dog park would be nice on that side of town. There's really not a whole lot for the, um, the dogs or owners with dogs on that side. So thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, comments on C CAP? Yes. I would just ask, um, where do we go from here with the CIP? We just kind of, we all, we all gave like a wish list and different things that we would like to see. Is this something that's going to come back at, you know, the next work session? There'll be a follow-up, you know, list made by staff of things they think are going to be in it, or are we all going to come together, go item by item, or I guess I'm just wondering where, where we go from here with the CIP stuff. My idea is to compile uh, all these notes that I have here of all of them, compile them, put a cost by them, and uh, come back, which we're going to talk a little bit about. We need to talk about the date for the third meeting because, um, as you know, originally we were looking for another date because of Vice Mayor Carr's absence. I didn't think we had one, but Irene did find an available date. If we've got that available date, um, then we have the whole board together so we could bring that back and probably that's when we start the CRA and go to the rest of the stuff. Do you want to talk about that date now and see if, yeah. be, because it'll be a lot better um, if we have a full board. The, it, go ahead, Irene. Tell May, Mayor, may I say something for, before we get to that? I, just to add to what you're saying and, and Commissioner Donovan, what I really envision is just what the city manager said, but we've still got that little issue with this money coming in from the $5 million that we don't know how it's going to work. Some of that could foreseeably be used for some of the things that we're talking about. It's just a matter of priority and how much. I don't think we should be just squandering it just to spend it, spend it. But I think whatever we decide here, there's going to be some additional money that could be spent in that regard too. So we may not solve the entire issue, this list that with this particular budget between now and September 1st, but maybe around Christmas or early in, in, in the next year, once we get a little bit of that money, we can decide how that works too and maybe do a little more too. Mm -hmm. that, that's just a thought. Yes, by then we'll probably learn about the, uh, the rules of, the, uh, right. of this fund too, it's because they haven't really told us yet. Infrastructure for yeah. sure. Yeah. That's, yeah, we know that for sure, so. You wanna talk about the day now because we're getting close to the uh, quitting time. Yeah. I think the one day that we found um, was the 23rd of August, which is a Monday. Com Commissioner August. Carr will be back the 22nd, and Commissioner Vaticatos will be leaving the 26th. Y'all, BOA is here the 25th, 24th. The 25th is that VIP at the hospital. At the hospital as well. Yeah. And uh, we have to have it all done by the 7th of September, so that only leaves us I'm good on the 23rd. So we would move the meeting from the August 12th to the 23rd and be able to have a full board so we could have a full, um, you know, a full meeting to decide these things and, and go into the CRA and the enterprise funds. I, I know I can't do the 23rd. It's, uh, it's the first day of my last semester of school, so I got to go to that class. See, that's why I had to. I, I knew I had that day. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I forgot. I told you I forgot. First day I, I, of the last I told you I semester. forgot it. I had that day. First day. First day of school. Yep. Oh. oh, come on. That's syllabus day. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can, though. I, I did become available. I previously told the city manager I couldn't do the first week in August. I am available to do that. If that, I don't know what that opens up for you. Um, oh, that week. Vice Mayor, what day you leave? I'm out on that. The first week of August, we have leave two commissioners out that I have down. Yeah. That's Commissioner Terrapani and August. Commissioner Donovan. Back to You're timeless. Yep. Oh, the second week. Yeah. Uh, since I had some, you know, health-related things with my family, I can do the second week in August. Like if we move it up from the 12th. What, when are you going out of town, Vice Mayor? I'm leaving the 11th morning. You're leaving the 11th? And you're so back. I'm no longer out of town on the 10th or the 9th. Well, so the, the 9th was the original one we tried and couldn't. I, yeah, but things have changed. Yeah. How about Commissioner Donovan? I have him out the 9th and 10th as well. I could do the 9th or the 10th. 
Okay. If he was the one who could get back in time. Commissioner Terrapani was the one who didn't think he the could get back. The end of the 10th because you already have your senior. No, 9th we're talking about. <laughs> okay. That was an original date we tried to switch it to, but we had one who couldn't come. So right. the 9th is one of the original dates, if that's okay with everybody. I'm okay with the 9th, too. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. What date is that? The 9th. Okay. It's Monday. Monday, August 9th. You okay. Replacing Thursday the 12th. <clears throat> good. Mr. Chris, looks like you've got a good day on the 9th. Good. Appreciate it, guys. See, Vice Mayor, you kept us here an extra 18 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe we might finish 12 minutes. We don't have time to continue on the uh, CRA. Uh, <laughs> but let's finish the 12 minutes. I mean, we have 12 minutes to, to go through something, right? <laughs> I don't know if we can or not. <laughs> Mayor, can I just make a comment to the staff? Uh, like, I appreciate, we all appreciate you all being here. So much. Uh, just a reminder, like, we, we don't talk to each other about stuff, so at times we may poke at each other, so it's nothing against you all or towards you all. It's just, this is the first time we get to talk about this stuff together. So just a reminder for that, and we really appreciate everything that you all have done for this budget to get to this point as well. Yeah, we thank you. Yes. Um, we're not going to go to the uh, CRA. I don't think we've got time. It's only uh, 11 minutes, but uh, well, that concludes the agenda. Um, uh, we'll go to staff comments. Uh, Chief Young, do you have anything? No, sir. Mr. Trask? Nothing, thank you. Mr. Lecours? No, sir. Ms. Jacobs? No comments, thank you. Vice Mayor Carr? None, thank you. Commissioner Terrapani? I'm good, Mayor, thank you. Commissioner Donovan? No comments. Thanks, Mayor. Commissioner Vaticuris. No. Well, I got a couple of things I'd like to, uh, to say is um, because uh, in the last meeting, I really didn't have much of information to give you in regards to the sister city trip. Uh, if anybody wants to, uh, to travel to, uh, to Greece at the same time to, uh, for the sister city sign in, Mr. Lulius is the, the travel agent. He can actually uh, give you the information you need and also for uh, a hotel in Athens, but again, the uh, transportation from Athens to the sister city, we still don't have any information to the last minute. More likely, I'm gonna find out when I get there because in some cases you go by plane, other times you go by, by, by boat, so I don't know. Um, also, uh, I'd like to, everybody to know that uh, I'm having a meeting with the Cretan Association they will be organizing a group to come to the Hanya for the signing. So I'm not really sure how many they're going to have, but most of those people are originated from, that, from, the, uh, from Crete, from uh, Hanya, so they want to be there. That's all I have, and that concludes the other uh, work session. It's adjourned at uh, 8.50 p.m. Bob, did you want to say something? Though?